Field, home of the Aggies, and about 100,000 ready to go tonight. This is SEC Saturday night. Welcome to SEC Saturday Night, presented by Holiday Inn Express. Home of the Aggies since 1905, and home of the 12th man, 3-1 Texas A&M, welcomes 3-1 South Carolina to town. Welcome, everybody. Tom Hart alongside Jordan Rogers. We'll see Cole Kublik in a moment or two. Okay, they say everything's bigger in Texas, and we know that. And around this program, so is the drama. This team has won three in a row, but the way they lost the opener, as some people think the sky is falling, you don't think that's the case? Not at all. Expectations here are always high, but it, pump the brakes. They are one play in that UCLA game away from being undefeated, having played 18 true freshmen. You got a quarterback that's a true freshman. He wasn't even the starter at the beginning of the season. So there's a lot to be positive and a lot to be hopeful about with this Aggie team. As you look at head coach Kevin Sumlin, you know that this program and his coaching has centered on his quarterback play. Of course, there is Johnny, that record-setting Heisman year of 2012. But since then, the carousel has spun and spun and spun. Hill, Allen, and Murray all transferred out. Trevor Knight was a great stopgap coming in from Oklahoma for a year. But Nick Starkle, a great drop-back pass, was uh, lost with a broken leg week one. And now it's Kellen Mond. And the good news is this offense continues to grow under Mond. Absolutely. I mean, first and foremost, he's shown poise well beyond his years. But the skill set that this young man possesses, he's accurate. He'll beat you with his arm. But even more dangerous than that, when he takes off, he's got a chance to outrun everybody on the field. And this offense has been dialed in around Kellen Mond and his skill set since week one. When he came in under a Nick Starkle uh, game plan, they have tweaked and retooled it to fit this young man on the other side for South Carolina a lot of the optimism around the program centers on their quarterback young Jake Bentley he would fit in great in this state he's a gunslinger he likes to take chances and Bentley is a guy that finally sparked the offense a great fourth quarter in a comeback win Saturday against La Tech yeah an offense that has really been sputtering I mean zero points 227 yards last week through three quarters this offense in this team right now is on the shoulders of Jake Bentley. He is as talented as I've seen from a young quarterback, cerebral, talented skill set wise, but he's got a big weight on his shoulders with no Debo Samuel. They got to be explosive. They got to generate something better this week with the offseason. Speaking of changes, a lot up front for more than that. Let's go down the field as we say good evening to Cole. Tom, you guys mentioned two high-powered offenses on the field tonight. Games are won and lost in the trenches. That will be the story tonight. Both of these offensive lines for Texas A&M and South Carolina starting their fourth different group in five games along the offensive line. Texas A&M is going to run four new offensive line in at a certain time. Eric McCoy, the center, will be the only O-lineman that stays on the field. Which group can gel? Which group can play as one? Might have the edge winning this football game. Injury note, Corey Helms, the right guard didn't even make the trip for the Gamecocks. Rashad Fenton from South Carolina from inside the one. Fenton slices his way out past the 25 yard line, and that's where Jake Bentley will set up shop. Jake Bentley brought a long and windy road to South Carolina, originally his home state. Yeah, his dad's a running backs coach there, but was also a fantastic high school coach in the Palmetto State. Of course, he comes from a football family. His brothers have and do play college football right now. And Bentley wasn't just an early enrollee. He graduated from high school early to come to Columbia and suit up as a starting quarterback. Didn't see action early last year. Didn't play in this Texas A&M game. But now he's 7-4 and four as a starter. There's his dad, the running backs coach. And they'll rotate three different running backs behind him. Tyson Williams gets the first crack at it from the backfield and is able to pick up four. Tyrell Dotson with the stop for AM. Here's how the Gamecocks look on offense. And as much as we need to get that running game going in South Carolina, Brian Edwards stepped up and filled the void of Debo Samuel last week. He's explosive. Uh, none bigger than that play to set them up for the game winning field goal. He's going to be the go to guy for Jake Bentley in Debo Samuel's absence. At 122 yards last week against Louisiana Tech. Bentley lets it go deep outside. It is incomplete. 
trying to find Shai Smith. Defensively, this is what the Aggies look like under Chief John Chavis. And Armani Watts is the veteran back there in a young secondary that has not played the pass very well this year. You see South Carolina testing them early. His communication, his leadership, and more importantly, his playmaking ability will be vital today. Quite an atmosphere here, Kyle Field, third and six. Pressure coming up the middle. Bentley hit as he throws, incomplete. And South Carolina will have to punt it away. He was trying to fit it in to Ortre Smith. Zaykovin Henderson brought the pressure. And Armani Watts alluded to the fact they were going to mix things up, roll coverage, bring some pressure. See big number 92 coming around the corner there. Zaykovin Henderson providing the pressure was just enough to knock Bentley off his spot, resulting in an inaccurate pass. And the dynamic Christian Kirk back to return. One of the most exciting players in all of college football. Had a kick return for 100 yards last week. Punt's going to drop in front of him and check up. And it will trickle out of bounds past the 25 yard line. 43 yard punt from Joseph Charlton. And here's the freshman Kellen Mond, originally from San Antonio. Same high school as Trevor Knight at Reagan High School. Went down to Florida to play his senior year at IMG Academy, playing with all those all-stars down there. He put up some incredible numbers. He set the school record for passing touchdowns and for rushing touchdowns, besting the numbers put up by a couple of SEC stars. Iman seventh in the league with six touchdowns. You mentioned it earlier, Jordan. He was directing an offense week one that wasn't built for him. It was built for the previous starter, Nick Starkle, who was lost to UCLA with a broken leg. Coming near side for the screen, here's Damian Ratley. No blockers there, but still able to find four. Aggies on offense feature Christian Kirk and some other playmakers on the outside. Christian Kirk is going to be the guy that Kellen Mong will be looking for. They're going to double him. They're going to try. Texas A&M is going to have to move him around. Formationally guard him, move him from one side of the field to the other. There's going to be a lot of spotlight on both sides of the ball, focusing on Christian Kirk. See if that attention helps open up the Aggie running game. Osborne, the freshman in motion. It's a handoff to Travion Williams. Williams has it first down, bends it back in before getting flipped by Chris Lamonts and is able to pick up a first down with a Baker's dozen on that run. Power play here to the outside. Eric McCoy, the center, number 64, pulls and really opens this up with a lead block. Lead block and Travion Williams able to capitalize. That's good. Texas A&M needs to get the run going early and control the time of possession in this game. 15th in the country with the run. That is a pass and a toss to Kirk. Trying to find the edge, but can't. No gain. Demias Williams is able to escort him out of bounds. South Carolina defensively has left a little bit to be desired. This is a very young defense. And Sky Moore is the one we're usually talking about, but T.J. Brunson has been so vital to this South Carolina defense. He's leading the SEC in tackles. He's violent, he's fast, he's physical, and a perfect complement to a very instinctive and pass coverage oriented Sky Moore. He's a hometown kid from Columbia, South Carolina at Richland Northeast. Second down 10. Mond looking for Williams out of the backfield. He's got blockers in a big hole. Can't quite make something happen with Fenton taking him out with gain of seven. A little trash talk and some energy from Rashad Fenton, the Miami kid. South Carolina's a little fired up. They've never beaten Texas A&M. 0-3 against the Aggies. And they haven't won a game in the Lone Star State since, nine, uh, since 60 years ago. They beat Darrell Royal's first team over in Austin. Kirk relocates to the slot. Mon over the middle on a crossing route defended by Fenton again, trying to find Jamon Osborn, the talented freshman who played high school ball with Mon. We're going to see South Carolina bringing some pressure. There's one thing when you're a young quarterback, 
It's as soon as you get hit or as soon as you get some pressure on you, those eyes start to drop. So I wouldn't be surprised if that's South Carolina's plan tonight, bring pressure, especially on third down situations like that. Shane Trapuca to punt it away for Texas A&M. Fenton will look for a return. Fair catch asks for it. He takes it right at the 10 yard line. A 36 yard punt from the senior Shane Trapuca. South Carolina back on offense when we return. You're watching Dr. Pepper Road to the Championship. Two dear friends on opposing sidelines tonight. Will Muschamp, the Georgia product, 2012 SEC coach of the year, Florida, second season in South Carolina. And on the other side, Kevin Sumlin, his uh, dear friend, is coaching with a heavy heart today. He lost one of his mentors in college football, lost a great man in Joe Tiller, longtime Purdue head coach. Sumlin was with Coach Tiller, not only at Purdue, but also at Wyoming, and before that at Washington State on Mike Price's staff. Second possession for the Gamecocks. Tyson Williams, the North Carolina transfer in at running back. Here's Williams. Maybe gets a couple on that. Well, if uh, the core cadets knew Tyson Williams story, they might be cheering for him a little bit tonight at least. Tyson Williams started his college career at North Carolina, announced his intent to transfer, and the Tar Heels blocked his transfer to South Carolina, which means that he would have to pay his own way during last year, his redshirt season. He ended up paying for his schooling with the GI Bill. Both of his parents are in the military. And his mom, a major in the United States Army. And him showing man coverage on second and eight. Williams bites and claws and is able to pick up seven. Aiden Hurst there. Watch when he's on the same side as the running back. When the running back's on the left of the quarterback there and the tight end is off the ball, a lot of times that triggers them running right behind Hayden Hurst. He's been great in the blocking game for the run. Still looking to see them get him more involved in the passing game as now left for Jake Bentley. Hurst the tight end number 81 on the right side this time. Third and one. And nothing doing. Texas A&M comes up with a big time stop. It's a reinvented front four, but Armani Watts is able to come up from his safety spot to help the big guys out. And that's a big time spot, a stop for the senior from 40, Texas. You're going to see a few guys get in there. Number 46, Landis Durham, is going to slice across from the backside. And then they're going to finish with three or four hats up there. Beautiful punt with fantastic hang time and Christian Kirk is forced to ask for a fair catch and he lost it Looked like South Carolina's Nixon got on it The punt by Charlton went 50 yards and the hang time is what caused Kirk's eyes to come off the ball and Keyshawn Nixon with the takeaway for South Carolina and special teams that's a killer for momentum. You just come up with a big third down stop. Christian Kirk, not a guy that usually has this happen. You see him check down once to see who's rushing, but just at the last minute takes his eyes off it, and that's a huge moment. For South Carolina there, switching field position and momentum. 12th man being heard as South Carolina comes back on offense. Bentley trying to find Hurst and threw it behind him. Armani Watts nearly had his fourth pick of the season. We had a chance to spend some time with Armani Watts. This is a guy who's about more than just football, but he's a darn good football player, too. Absolutely. I mean, if you look at him, it, it, He's so big and so physical for how athletic he is on the field. I mean, they have him listed at 205. I don't know how you cram 205 into that frame. He is physical. He'll come up and play the run, let alone he's the leader and very, very aggressive in that back end as well. Very young secondary. Bentley shovel pass. Wow. 
That was stuffed, stuffed out by Ataro Alaka. Tyson Williams had nowhere to go, and it's a loss of one. It's almost like the Aggies know what's coming. You know, they tried this little sprint shovel pass last week. It was to the right, though, which is a little more natural for a right-handed quarterback. I don't think you have the same effect or disguise running like a sprint out to the left, and you see Texas A&M was all over it. Well, there's a real lack of depth on the South Carolina offensive line. Mentioned before that Corey Helms, who's injured, did not make the trip. Zach Bailey is out at least two more games with a high ankle sprain. And now Malik Young... Their right tackle is slow to come off the field, and the athletic training staff will have to help the big fella off. A start for Sidarius Hutcherson at one of the guard spots today behind Donnell Stanley because Helms is out. And so they're going to have to go even deeper into that O-line. D.J. Park will come in at right tackle now. A&M leads the SEC in sacks per game. This is not the kind of environment or kind of team that you want to go into with second and third string offensive linemen. Got a passing situation, third down. You got a new right tackle and Landis Durham off the edge here. Keep an eye on that matchup if they do a deep pass here. Leads the team in sacks. They bring six. Bentley checks underneath. And that will be well short of the first down to Smith. Larry Pryor, the sophomore safety, comes in for the stop. The kicking game has produced less than desirable results for South Carolina. Parker White is just one for five. As a team, they're two for eight in field goals this season. Kurt Roper says it affects how he calls the game from the press box. White's first ever make was a game winner, a walk-off winner last week at Williams Bryce. This will be from 46. It'll be a career long, and it is a duck hook left. Special teams gave South Carolina a chance with the fumble recovery on the punt. But young Parker White, who was the hero last week, can't continue that momentum on his first attempt tonight. More chances to come for the youngster. SEC Saturday Night is presented by Holiday Inn Express. Be the readiest. This is a tradition-rich program and campus. Nothing like Midnight Yell, and they're at it again last night. Cole was supposed to make it over here, but uh, we couldn't wake him from his slumber. Howdy. Another chance for Kellen Mond in this Aggie offense. And Keith Ford gets his first tote. DJ Smith takes him down after a pickup of six. A lot of different guys that they can get the ball to in the running game for Texas A&M. Ford. They reach a thousand yards if you can get 99 of them tonight. And as close to passing 1957 Heisman winner John David Crow. Kevin Sumlin says he wants to keep everybody fresh offensively, and his philosophy with running backs is we're going to let everybody play because we need fresh legs not only late in the game but late in the season. Here's Ford. He's fresh. Back-to-back -back runs and a first down for Keith Ford, senior from Cypress, Texas, who transferred in from Oklahoma. Ford's a physical runner. I know he's only about 215 or so, but he runs physical, runs downhill. Great block on the outside there by right tackle Connor Lanfear, holding his guy and opening up that hole. Suffered an ankle injury in this game against South Carolina last season. It's one of the reasons Sumlin talked to us about developing running back depth. On a laser to the outside, and Jamarcus King almost jumped the route. He intended for freshman Kendrick Rogers. And when it comes to all those running backs that Kellen Mond has at his disposal, he's a great runner as well. Remember, he almost had that long touchdown run last week when they ruled him out of bounds. It would have gone for 89 yards and would have been the longest for a quarterback in school history. Bucky Richardson had an 82-yarder back in 1987. 
Midway through the first quarter. Here's Ford. And Ford gets wrestled to the ground by Kobe Smith. Pick up the two. All right, so passing situation here likely for Kellen Mond. What do you think of Mond as a passer? Well, I think he's extremely accurate, especially this young in, or this early in his career. Now, here's the thing. When you got a young guy, you got to make sure that pocket is clean. So one thing you got to start to keep an eye on is in passing situations, this offensive line is going to cut their splits to try to sure up that pocket in front of Mond. Anytime you got a young quarterback, you got something in your face, those eyes start to drop and you can't play quarterback without looking downfield. So keep an eye on that as we move forward here in the passing situations. They've allowed 12 sacks this season. South Carolina brings an extra man. Mon pressure dances away from it. And Mon gets tripped up just shy of the first down marker. It's a pickup of seven. Freshman right, Brad Johnson with some playing time credited with the stop. Just talked about his accuracy, but this is what he can do as well. Sky Moore comes just clean up the middle. Excuse me, not Sky Moore, but he'll make you miss. Look at the eyes. Saw it right away, made one move, got vertical. That's what a mobile quarterback can do for you. Even if he came up a little bit short, that prevents a seriously negative play and turns that into a positive. Into South Carolina territory at least. Trapuca to punt it away again. Where's number 18, just like his grandpa did for the Denver Broncos before some guy named Peyton put it on. In fact, it was retired before Peyton showed up and got special permission to wear it. Lamont takes a fair catch, 40-yard punt. The trade punts here early. It's like a soccer game, College Station. Well, Kyle Field respectfully quiet at this point. An injured player on South Carolina's punt return team. There are two number sixes on the roster for South Carolina, so we will wait until we can figure out exactly which one it is. It's down on the field for the Gamecocks. The Muschamp's team has dealt with a host of injuries this season, and that South Carolina athletic training staff doing hard work on the injured Gamecock right now. As both training staffs tend to the injured South Carolina player, we will step away for another break here in College Station. Um, you know, this is incredibly scary. We're going to be, again, I don't lose sight of the fact that we don't know who's watching from that knows him well. We're going to continue to update this. Tom Hart and those guys are continue to update this from site as well as you can see him. Terry Gujar now on the cart. Uh, and being taken off of the field at Kyle Field, and, and here you go, uh, right there. That's a great sign right there now. I'll tell you, and I'll tell you, there's a bunch of teammates seeing that that lets them feel a lot better than they did two and three minutes. A bunch minutes. of fans, too. I mean, uh, everybody there in the stadium holding their breath, waiting to see what happens and uh, getting the thumbs up. Yeah. Certainly relieving. All right. Obviously, the very latest on his status will be given as soon as we have it. For now, let's get you back. There it is again. Let's get you back to Kyle Field. Our thanks usually in Aggieland when somebody flashes a thumbs up, it's followed by Giggum. Here, that thumbs up means a lot more coming from a South Carolina player as Terry Gujar is helped off the field. Certainly emotional for both sides and. They will take care of Terry Gujar and get more medical attention immediately. What looked like an innocuous special teams play and a simple fall on the turf is obviously much worse. And now it's back to football. Jake Bentley handles a high snap. Here's Tyson Williams. Here's another look at the injury to Terry Gujar on the punt return team after the punt from Trapuca. Left side of your screen, number six in white. It's really it, it, it's tough. You know, you can't really tell what exactly happens there. And then the thumbs up coming off the field. They uh, cut his shoulder pads off. They cut his jersey off. They took the face mask off and got the helmet off almost immediately. And now he'll get proper medical attention. We'll keep you posted on any news we may have regarding that injury. Second down seven. Bentley wants motion from his tight end August. 
and South Carolina didn't like the look, and they'll use a timeout here. First charge timeout, South Carolina. That's a 30 second timeout. Matt Leffler, our referee tonight, 5 11 to go in the first quarter. You mentioned that you've been through something similar to this where a, a teammate or somebody on the side is injured in such a fashion. How do you reprogram your brain to return to this violent sport? It's hard. And, and, and usually it doesn't happen right away, which is, which is the most difficult part. It, it, a lot of onus is responsibility here is going to be on Jake Bentley and refocusing in this offense. You can see there was a little bit of a mental error there. August was supposed to be on one side of the ball, uh, confusion, timeout. It's not easy. It, it brings everything into perspective, and you start to look at this game a little different when you see your teammate or an opposing teammate even on a stretcher going out of here. So not easy to put that behind you, and sometimes it, 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 it takes a, a few plays or a few drives even. Well, normalcy will be a ways off for both sides for a while now, second and seven. Traded punts thus far. Bentley on play action. Looking for Hurst. His tight end. Can't haul it in. And it falls incomplete. Coverage on the back end from Texas A&M in this very, very young secondary. Debbie on Renfro. Freshman from Palin, Texas, had the coverage there on Hurst. Bentley looking for the guy I keep saying they got to get more involved, but it's difficult when you don't run the ball well Play action doesn't have the same effect so those DBs aren't as worried at, or they don't get their eyes in the backfield And you don't have the windows that you're used to so you're gonna have to find different ways to get Hayden Hurst the ball Not not relying on play action They're down seven Aggies drop deep Bentley pressured Somehow escapes the first couple. Can't get past the third, and he's taken down right at the line of scrimmage. Texas A&M is a team under John Chavis, which leads the SEC in sacks per game. A lot of those over the years have come against non-conference opponents, and this is big to get some pressure on Bentley. Yeah, and it's the name that I already talked about earlier today, Landis Durham, off the right side of that offensive line, which now the injury with Malik Young, right tackle, is completely retooled. They're going to have to find ways to add another blocker and protect Bentley because Texas A&M is rearing their ears back right now. Another beauty of a punt from Charlton and another fair catch by Kirk who fumbled the last one away. That's a 44-yarder that time from the sophomore Joseph Charlton. So the Aggies haven't gotten it going just yet on offense. They've run 10 plays. And they've totaled 50 yards. Let's go down in the field and get an update from Cole Kubelik. Tom, update on Terry Guzer. He has been placed into the ambulance and is headed off to Charles and White Hospital in College Station, about six miles away from here. But he is loaded, headed to the hospital for further observations. All right, thank you, Cole. Cole, stay with us. I want to get back to you after this play because what's, in addition to Terry Gujar's health, there's also the question of how you return to the game. That's a backwards pass hauled in by Paul, and it gets taken down in South Carolina territory. As you were down on the field watching the medical staff, staffs plural, the A&M guys were down there helping out to attend to Gujar. What was the mood down on the field? Before he headed off to Scott and White Hospital, Tom, it was a somber moment. You saw Coach Will Muschamp did not leave his side. A lot of concern on his face, as you can tell. Some of the Texas A&M staff, all of their training staff, there by his side, just trying to help in any way that they could. And you guys mentioned it. This, these two teams are both laser focused in on what's happening to one of their opponents that they have a lot of respect for and one of their teammates who they've been through a lot with. All right, thank you, Cole. Kendall Bussey rips off a 10-yard gain. A&M trying to find the end zone for the first time tonight. Three and a half to go in the first quarter. Bussey became a workhorse a couple of weeks ago. Closed out the Nichols game with 13 carries in the final two drives. It's a kid who thought about transferring away from Texas A&M in the offseason. Eight yards a carry for this Texas A&M running game. A little swing pass. Maybe. Maybe a yard past the line of scrimmage for Paul, freshman from Bremen, Texas. 
is about uh, 50 miles north of here at Highway 6. And these are the reads that they're going to start to allow Kellen Mond to develop in. That's a that's an RPO. That's a run pass option. He's got an end to read. He can hand it. He can take it, or he can throw. It's really three options on that play, and that's what we've seen this Texas A&M offense continue to lean more and more towards to play to Kellen Mond's strengths. Four of six through the air thus far for the freshman quarterback. Handles the errant snap. Here's Bussy again. No gain. We're talking with the uh, Texas A&M staff about a lot of those run pass options for Kellen Mond. And while it may seem at times like they're giving him the read, when it comes to the zone game, the read is all his. But they can simplify sometimes with the run pass options, can't they? Absolutely. It's all based on leverage. You're controlling Kellen Mond's eyes. You're not allowing him to look at one linebacker, seeing the leverage. If it's not there, you hand it off. If they give you the look you want, you throw it. You simplify things for young quarterbacks. He's got a young receiving core. Mond on third and ten. This is Bussey. He's got the first down. And Bussey gets chucked out of bounds by Rashad Fenton, but not before he finds 19 on the catch and run. The sophomore from New Orleans. And this is an, an, an element that Bussey brings to the table here. He's very elusive, very quick out of the backfield. Kevin Sumlin, when we talked to him yesterday, kind of looked down at the stat sheet and said, oh, man, we got one carry. Last week, I, I wanted to get him more involved. So we're seeing him more and more involved early on, and that's one of the reasons he catches the ball very well out of the backfield. Adam Newman High School in New Orleans, same high school as Peyton Manning. Bussey originally committed to his hometown school, Tulane. Williams has taken over in the backfield now. Mon finds Travion Williams. Whoa, what a spin move! And Williams unable to take advantage of it, maybe got an extra yard. But he put Jam Williams in the uh, washing cycle, a little spin on him. <laughs> That's what these guys can do when they get the ball in their hands. Whoop! I mean, <laughs> that was never in my repertoire. <laughs> Not once. Second down, two. Williams, no gain. And that will leave third. Taylor Stallworth with a stop up front. Traveris Robinson's South Carolina defensive unit. This has been an area of emphasis here for Noel Mazzoni and this Texas A&M offense, the tight red zone. So once you get inside that 12-yard line and they're right on the edge of it right now, their main focus has been getting Christian Kirk the ball. You're going to see a lot of double-team looks, a lot of bracket looks as we're seeing right here on Christian Kirk. So they may be entitled to run the ball. This is a long one, almost two yards needed. They'll get that from Keith Ford. Able to take it inside the 10. And when we come back to the second quarter, Texas A&M is going to be looking at a first and goal. An emotional start to this one. Deep in the heart of Texas. And the Aggies looking for some momentum and trying to get the crowd back into it. Take a look at our tailgaters of the week brought to you by Zaxby's. They took it to a different level here in College Station as they always do. A little tailgate karaoke, huh? I'll be singing the battle hymn. Sawing horns here at Kyle Field. There's nothing like it. What a scene. Welcome to the SEC. Kellen Mond, the freshman quarterback, knocking on the door, first and goal from the eight. Pressure from the edge. Mond looking to the right side. He finds his man to the pylon. And Travion Williams gets popped. They say he's in. Touchdown, Texas A&M. Eight-yard strike from Mond to Williams. Dives and puts his body on the line there. And that's gonna, I'm gonna take a second look at that. That's pretty close. 
Only has to break the play in the front end. DJ Smith, the first guy that got him. Feet were inbounds. The ball, I don't know. TJ Brunson is the one that cleaned it up, and I think he got him before he got to the yellow stripe. The ruling on the field is a touchdown. The previous play is under further review. That's why you don't give up on a play. A great job by Brunson coming in. Could have easily just given up on that. Oh, we got a great camera view here. If the ball touches the pylon, it's a touchdown. As his hand touches the pylon, which is out of bounds, that's where you take a snapshot of. And you can give him goal line extended if he was ever inside it, but uh, I don't know that he even got the ball past the goal line, goal line extended anyway. Remember, it was ruled a touchdown on the field. I don't have the ball Definitely, over the front of the uh, goal line, do you? I don't either. It's not there. It's not there. Yeah, the left hand hits the pylon, but the ball's not over. And then went out of bounds there. Long look in the uh, replay booth. And back in the control room, John Bible is our replay official tonight. After review. There you go. That's what we saw up here. So they'll take six off the board, and Texas A&M looking at second and goal. They still have that starting offensive line in the game. Martin, Prater, McCoy, Lanfear, and Southern. Tenth play of the drive. And Travion Williams, who was a thousand yard rusher last year, flanks the freshman Kellen Mond. Williams, no question this time. He's in for the Aggies' first score of the night. A 10 play, 55 yard drive for Texas AM. Methodical. Just an inside zone. Down that close to the goal line, it's man on man. Can you beat the guy over the top of you? Great way to finish it off there for Texas A&M. Daniel LaCamera punches through the extra point. And Texas A&M opens up a 7-0 lead on South Carolina. For the video center back in Birmingham and uh, the guys, John Bible, up in the replay booth. Great call on a second look at the would be touchdown, and then Williams wasted no time. This is a running back by committee here for Kevin Sumlin in Texas A&M, and it was uh, really interesting talking to him about his philosophy when it comes to running backs. He said in an SEC game, you get 15 carries, you're going to get hit three to five times. That's a lot of ice baths, and he wants everybody fresh, especially considering the way Texas A&M has struggled in the second half of seasons. Yeah, and it's not just the you had three or four more carries in this game. It's those three or four or five and how that multiplies game to game, week to week. You get to the end of the season, that could be 50, 60, 70 carries. You wake up a little different on a Sunday morning, no matter how many carries, but four, five, ten carries extra. Uh, it's a great philosophy to save legs and save these bodies, especially when you have so many talented guys. I mean, Bussy has looked great tonight, and he's third on the depth chart. And it applies not just the running backs, but really every position group. And a change of pace for Texas A&M this season. One of the reasons they played so many guys in that opener against UCLA. 60 different Aggies saw the field against the Bruins. They able to share the rock tonight, coming out of the backfield behind Mon. Nine carries combined from Ford, Williams, and Bussey. And they got a quarterback that can run it too. That's a full backfield. A mouth's defeat. Well, Jake Bentley back uh, at quarterback for South Carolina. They lost Terry Gouju to that scary injury late in the first quarter. 
They're without Debo Samuel, perhaps the most dynamic player in the league and leading the league in all-purpose yards. They're without two starting offensive linemen. This is a steep hill for South Carolina's offense. Bentley fires one to the outside. Caught! First down, Shai Smith. And Bentley can make it happen quick. He's not afraid to look deep. First, first down for South Carolina. Wow. That's a throw right there. And it, <laughs> Jake Bentley has as good an arm talent as there is for a young quarterback, but it's the ball placement here. The height and trajectory, let alone leaving it outside, because Armani Watts had a beat on that one. Bentley to throw again. Lobs one to Hurst. Somehow he brought it in. Aggies gambled for it. The tight end, former baseball player, takes it into Texas A&M territory. 27-yard gain. And another great throw by Bentley. He buys time in the pocket with pressure in his face, which is why this ball came out with not as much heat as he's used to putting on. But that's that's some strength right there. Hayden Hurst. It's a grown man snatching that ball away from Armani Watts. Watts his gamble backfired. He's already got three picks this season. He was hunting number four. Bentley deep down the sideline. Too strong. That time he's trying to fit it to Brian Edwards. Interesting dichotomy from South Carolina philosophically between what they do offensively and what they do defensively. Will Muschamp's team will very rarely allow a big play, but with Jake Bentley at quarterback, he's always looking for a big play. Yeah, and they haven't been great at executing them. They, they haven't hit the plays that they've wanted to from an explosive nature, whether it's passing or running the ball, but they're going to take their hacks. They're going to take those shots, and Brian Edwards is that guy that's going to be the deep threat for them moving forward without Debo. Bentley pressured and taken down. The Aggies get to him with a speed rush from the outside. Landis Durham was the first man there, and it's a loss of nine. And John Chavis brings some pressure off the edge. It's number 46. Landis Durham on the right side of your screen. Mm. Nobody there to pick him up. Not sure if the back was supposed to scan to that side. He got out and oh, they got, got away with a face the, mask. And now this crowd's really getting into it. Third down and dime box to go. Bentley escapes, heaves deep, got a man! Touchdown, South Carolina! Shy Smith from 45 yards out. This is why Jake Bentley is so dangerous. His ability to make things happen outside the pocket. Parker White for the point after for South Carolina. And after zeros in the first quarter, we open the second quarter with back-to-back -back touchdown drives. Locked at seven. And things have gotten really interesting here at College Station all of a sudden. Bentley pulls a Houdini. First two miss, and then he chucks it deep. It's almost like he wants to be pressured. Smith's touchdown ties it up at seven. Allstate is proud to be part of the team that comes together to do good by contributing to participating university's general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kicked. To date, Allstate has contributed millions in scholarship funds. Kyle Field, home of the Aggies since 1905 in South Carolina, making its second trip here. Only one win in the Lone Star State for South Carolina. From 60 years ago. Parker White kicks it off for the Gamecocks. 
nobody there to return for Texas A&M. Christian Kirk had walked up to block. Let's take another look at that South Carolina scramble. And Tom, what you're going to see as soon as the pocket breaks down for Jake Bentley, the eyes of Texas A&M in the secondary are all in the back. Their feet stop, and Shai Smith keeps running right down the middle. Bentley does a great job keeping his eyes downfield, but notice all the defensive backs stop their feet and stare in the background. Can't do that when you're the deep safeties. Got to keep an eye on who's running downfield. Lays, hey, he tucks that ball, he's going to run. A couple of big plays happening behind Armani Watts so far on that drive for South Carolina. And Watts was late getting there. Remember, this is a very young secondary. And we talked to Armani about his responsibility trying to take care of the freshman and help him out. Complete, trying to sneak it outside to Christian Kirk. Cole, what do you hear from John Chavis down there? Spoke to the Texas A&M defensive coordinator before the game, Tom, and he said, Cole, we are worried about when Jake Bingley gets outside of the pocket. We emphasized rush lanes, not to get too far upfield and stay with your pass rush because he is lethal when he escapes the pocket, whether with his legs or like we saw in that previous touchdown with his arms. It was a big concern for A&M coming into this game. Jake Bingley is a guy that works on what they call off-platform throws. Oh, yeah. That's, that's something I was big on. What that means is when your feet aren't on you, how you're used to them. You're not balanced. You got someone in your face. You're rolling to your right, to your left. Yeah, those things are innate, but they can be practiced as well. Mon goes down. Eric Jones gets to him. It's a loss of eight. But both of these teams over recent history have had some fantastic pass rushers, both going first overall in the draft. These guys don't have the same credentials, but they're getting to the quarterbacks tonight. Uh, it's a D-line stunt. Over Jones comes from the opposite side of the center. Kind of got away with the hand of the face as we saw one earlier as well. Good for the goose, good for the gander. Aggies two for four on third down, five on the clock. The freshman Mon seeing pressure again. O-line picked it up for a moment. Can't hold forever. And Mon will chuck it over the Aggie bench. Brad Johnson and DJ Wanham were both chasing him down. Johnson, number 19 for South Carolina, seeing some more playing time tonight after Bryson Allen Williams was lost due to injury last week. And that linebacker crew is, I think, the most talented on South Carolina's defense with Sky Moore, TJ Brunson. Really had a workload picking up the slack with Bryce and Allen Williams in that injury. Shane Trapuca, that or pardon me, Uncle Kelly played basketball at Notre Dame and in the NBA. And that one will go out of bounds across the sideline, and we'll see where it's marked. Special teams play has been pretty good for South Carolina tonight. That is merely a 33-yard punt. The L leader's looking for something else to yell about. We have an update on the water situation. Looking at the defense. You don't, look, neat. You don't look goofy at all <laughs> doing that. <laughs> Bentley looking to uncork one to the near side. That's caught for a first down. So how is that helpful to a quarterback? Well, it's all about providing the vantage point that you're used to. So it's one thing watching film and saying, oh, yeah, that's cover one. But it's another thing getting back into the role or the place that you stand in practice and evaluating the defense and then putting a time clock on it. Yeah. It's like actually getting a rep. So I don't know about this, but no, yeah, you actually look good in this. So it can't <laughs> be real. It must be broken. <laughs> you guys, you quarterbacks use it to uh, use it to look at football plays and look at secondary. I wonder what else you could use the virtual reality for. Here's Bentley lobbing it. Hurst has another big game, and he's inside the 20 and down to the 15-yard line. That's a gain of 24. I think uh, this is, I don't know what file this is, but I'm going to have the chicken wings and uh, <laughs> chicken fingers. So you want some? You want my yeah, tray? I'll take the There's boneless right there. Uh huh. This of course, I'd good. be playing football, and he's looking for the buffet. Uh, I want to eat. <laughs> Good barbecue here in Texas. Also good football game thus far. And South Carolina looking for its first lead of the game behind their freshman quarterback, pardon me, sophomore quarterback, Jake Bentley. There's a tight end, August to the right side. Bentley gives it up. 
And Rico Dowdle gets taken down behind the line of scrimmage. Latara Alaka, the junior out of Houston, Cypress Falls, brings him down. Here's a quarterback view in many ways. And that's really what we're talking about. That view right there, if you're sitting on your couch or you're watching, that's what's realistic for evaluating tape and looking at defenses from a quarterback standpoint. Arkansas and Brett Bielema use a similar system, and one of the ideas is that you can get reps away from the field, even off campus. Oh, yeah. Second down, 12. Here's Hurst again, the former baseball player. He's able to take it down for a gain of four before Armani Watts brings him down. Really only a handful of schools using that as well. And I think it's valuable. Uh, visual, visualization is so important. And so when you're not on the field taking those reps, when you're a young quarterback like Jake Bentley, who played part of the season last year, he's still growing. And obviously Kellen Mond is a true freshman. The more reps you can get, the more you're going to be ready for these game-like scenarios. I don't know if you can replicate this atmosphere, though. Now he's looking at a third down in front of nearly 100,000. Pressure coming. Bentley backtracking. Heaves. And nowhere to go. Kurt Roper talked about this earlier. The offensive coordinator for South Carolina kind of has his back against the wall in some ways when they get in the red zone. They will take more chances because the kicking game has been so very inefficient. Already one missed field goal tonight. And that's not a position you want to be in as a coordinator. No, not at all. And they, they try to a man beater here to the slot side. But right now without Debo Samuel, you don't have the same playmakers to beat man coverage as we used to. 29-yard attempt for Parker White, who is one for six. And 0 for one tonight. And White able to sneak it through. So Parker White bounces back after his miss in the first quarter. And South Carolina has got its first lead of the night here in Aggieland. Time meeting between South Carolina and Texas A&M, and the Gamecocks have yet to win one against the Aggies. 10-7 lead. And South Carolina with its first lead of the game since thanks to a six-play drive that ended in a 29-yard field goal from freshman Parker White. And White out of Wando High School in Mount Pleasant, South Carolina, will kick it off. The always dangerous Christian Kirk took one 100 yards last week against Arkansas. It was the first kickoff return for a touchdown in seven years for AM. Kirk tempted, and he will bring it out four yards deep. Kirk trying to get past the 10. He will not. Great special teams coverage by South Carolina. Cole, let's take a look at how Texas A&M is the readiest, brought to you by Holiday Inn Express. The zone read is a big part of the Texas A&M offense. You see the line of sight here for quarterback Kellen Mond. You read the in-man on the line of scrimmage, but it's not just whether he plays flat or stays home. It's his depth attacking the mesh point or where the ball will be handed off. You see there, he comes flat. Kellen Mond keeps it, goes for over 70 yards on the ground, comes deep and attacks the quarterback. You hand the football off, ends up as a touchdown for Travion Williams. Not just about whether that defender stays at home on the line of scrimmage, it's where he attacks and how deep he attacks that mess point or the handoff point between Mond and the tailback. Known as a great runner coming out of IMG Academy, the number three dual threat quarterback in the country. And he gives it up to Keith Ford. I don't, I don't really remember, though, that's such a key part of their offense. I, I don't remember seeing a whole lot of zone read thus far tonight. Is that something that they'll build towards or sprinkle in? They've done it a, a, a few times that it's just been a handoff. But it's really situationally. You're, you're going to see at times they'll lock the box and just block it backside if they have the look they want. So uh, at times that offensive line is controlling whether it's a read or not. Good balance on the offense uh, play calling for Texas A&M, but Mond out in front of Kendall Bussey that time. And now third and seven. And this could be a huge momentum play for South Carolina. Omazone, the offensive coordinator, Texas A&M. He was at Auburn back in the day when Traveris Robinson was a player. Robinson trying to match wits with him on the other side as a defensive coordinator for South Carolina. Mazzoni stressed third downs, an area they need to improve, especially with a young quarterback 
is where defenses mix up coverages the most. There's Traveris Robinson. Been with Will Muschamp for a while now. Third down, seven. South Carolina brings three. Screen set up for four. Dances his way towards the line. We'll see where the spot is. He can get to the 20 for the first down. And we think he's going to be inches short. Of course, the yellow line unofficial. And fourth down, forthcoming for Texas A&M. Keith Ford pleading his case to stay on the field. Evan Sullins having none of that. They're going to punt it away. And a huge stop for South Carolina in this defense. Texas A&M just hasn't got much going on offense yet right now. They're trying the zone read. They're trying the RPOs. Just haven't seen much downfield passing from Kellen Mond. The running game's been okay. There's really an absence of pushing that ball intermediately downfield. And a whistle before they could get the snap off. The ruling on the field was the player was short of the line to gain. Texas A&M is challenging that ruling. Correction, the previous play is under further review. Okay, so no challenge from Texas A&M. There is no challenge. So there's not a timeout on the line for Kevin Sumlin's squad. And talked about it before that play. Huge third down stop by South Carolina if it stands. And if that's the case, here's a South Carolina team that had to struggle to come from behind to win last week. Got outplayed a couple of weeks ago at home against Kentucky. And come in here with a whole lot of momentum tonight, even though they had that last second win against Louisiana Tech. Needs to get to the 20 for the first down. And of course the second off the bounce he was past the 20 but the question is where was the ball when he was deemed down. And that was probably where his when his left elbow yeah. was down. Let's see if we can see here when that elbow hits. Right there. I'll tell you what I think uh, I think they're probably going to improve the spot. The question is are they going to improve it enough to give him a first down. Because they have them almost a football short of the 20 yard line. After, re after review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. It's fourth down. Hmm. No movement whatsoever. The forearm was down, and then the ball came forward, it seems. So Kevin Sumlin's team will stay in a punting situation. Already an emotional night here in this stadium and an emotional day for AM head coach Kevin Sumlin. And not much of a return out to the 30 yard line for South Carolina. Well, the college football world lost a, a great man and a great offense of mind today. Joe Tiller, who with Drew Brees and some great quarterbacks took Purdue to the Rose Bowl, died today at his home in Buffalo, Wyoming. This was not only a great football mind, but a fun-loving coach. When he retired from Purdue, he and his wife Arnett took their RV cross-country to check in not only on their family members, but to check in on friends throughout college football and just go watch college football games. He passed away today at his home up in Wyoming. Kevin Sumlin not only played linebacker at Purdue, but uh, with Coach Tiller, bounced around a couple times, a couple stops. Mark Price's staff at Washington State. Then Tiller took him with him to Wyoming, where they won the WAC, and then to Purdue, where they invented the spread offense. And, and in a lot of ways, we invented Big Ten football with guys like Drew Brees and Kyle Orton. Yeah, and, and someone said when I asked him, you know, where's your, where's your philosophy? Where's your philosophy and motivation? And, Offensive design come from and Tiller was one of those guys he mentioned it's a, played a big role in, in who he is as a coach today Last time I saw Joe Tiller I was doing a game at Penn State meeting with Joe Paterno and there was a knock on Coach Paterno's side door and there was Joe Tiller and Arnett They had just rolled into town wanted to come see coach and they're there to watch some football <laughs> So our thoughts and prayers are with Arnett and the Tiller family and everybody involved with college football and Purdue University indeed
Sumlin was in many ways a 12th man himself. He got to Purdue on an academic scholarship and one going to play football. Sat in the stands as a freshman with his dad said I think I can play here. And uh, as a sophomore got out there and didn't dress the first game came off the bench in 1983 in game two against the national champions from Miami. Said he was talking trash on the sideline because he didn't think he was going to play. Then two Purdue linebackers went down. He had to find a mouthpiece and get taped up, went in the game. And the next week he started, and he started the remainder of his career. Didn't take him long to earn a scholarship. Sometimes those guys on the sidelines are the ones that are talking the most. <laughs> but yeah, then you step out here. Let's go. Oh, it's like when your buddies don't hold you back yeah. when you ask them to hold you back. <laughs> like, Wait, what? I got to go in? Rico Gattle on the field now, tailback for South Carolina. Bentley on the end route. He's got a big completion of Brian Edwards, and he's into Aggie territory for Miles Jones brings him down. 25 yards on the completion. This is Brian Edwards working on the outside. Just a slant route on true freshman Miles Jones. The ball placement allowed. Edwards the run after the catch. Leading receiver now the Debo Samuel is out lost for the season. With a fractured ankle. Bentley. All alone to the outside it's Edwards again. Edwards trying to score free he does it took about five different Aggies to bring him down. And Edwards a sophomore from Conway South Carolina picks up 21. And you can tell they like that matchup. Another one on number 10 true freshman Miles Jones out there. He's a lengthy 6 4 corner, but when you're playing off zone like that. Smart quarterback's going to take that free access throw any day of the week. We've gotten some great players from the Palmetto State. Edwards, another in the long line. Dattle gets popped from behind the line of scrimmage by Tyrell Dodson. They'll go backwards for a couple. Dodson. Dotson's a big guy. He might even be the biggest middle linebacker that Texas A&M has had, weighing in at just under 245. Call him the thumper. That's why right there. He also runs a 4640. That's almost Jeez. unfair. Oh, it's absolutely unfair. <laughs> Bentley. Dangerous into and over traffic trying to find Rico Dattle in third and 12 coming up. Well, we're starting to see their plan. You know, one of the things we talked about with Drew Brees talking with Kevin Sumlin was that he liked pressure to come from the backside instead of the front because of his size. Yeah. It's almost like Bentley is more comfortable when there's traffic around him. Yeah, totally. And that, that's kind of a quarterback preference. I personally wanted to see it. I want to know how much time I had. Bentley, obviously, very comfortable with anything. Hands, players, pressure bearing down. Even the stage. Aggies bring a corner blitz. Bentley lobs it incomplete. And a flag on the play will get pass interference against Devion Renfro. First flag of the night. Matt Leffler is our referee. We'll see three, four different freshmen in the secondary for Texas A&M. Renfro, one of them. Pass interference. Defense, number 29. That's a spot foul. Automatic first down. And they're going after these true freshmen, young corners in the secondary for Texas A&M. Look at the length here. Renfro just 6-2, but look at those arms. That's what you want to see out of a cornerback. Well, those, just... those guys are tough. I mean, those guys are tough for any receiver to go up against, whether it's getting jammed and pressed with those long arms or batting balls down. Arms just look longer because he's wearing a Schmidian jersey, <laughs> kind of like you in your Lulu land. Oh, oh. It's, it's a compliment. Like it's a compliment. Bentley puts it into the pocket of A.J. Turner. He gets stood up behind the line of scrimmage. No gain. Jacobin Henderson and company riding him back. Well, one of the talking about all the youngsters in the secondary for Texas A&M and the defense as a whole. John Chavis said, "Listen, there's a there's a benefit to this. 
we play all these young guys now we're going to be better not only the back end of this season but years down the road when he was playing guys like Eric Reed and Tyra Matthew at LSU as freshmen two years later he said they turned into the best defense ever coached shovel pass Hayden Hurst to tight end picks up four the problem is for John Chavis that means you have more freshmen on the field and they're going to make freshman mistakes absolutely and that's one reason that Chavis pointed out I need my front four as we just saw Zakovin Henderson make a big play against the run there he needs his front four to be more disruptive so they don't have to rely on bringing pressure and leaving those young secondary guys on an island they can play zone they can play softer coverage and still get pressure on the quarterback that's why up front Seen great things out of Landis Durham so far. Getting pressure on Bentley, and the rest of that front four is playing well so far tonight. Place is rocking again. Crossing routes. Bentley pressure. Drop. They got to him, and he lost the football. Durham, the first man there, and Bentley coughs it up. It's Texas A&M's football. Kingsley Kiki found it. His second fumble recovery of the season. You're going to see Durham again working on the outside here. That time he's got Rico Dattle, a running back. That's He's licking his chops when he's got a running back in his face. And a great job. And not just corralling the quarterback, it's stripping too. Get that ball out. That's, that's great red zone defense right there. Wrap a guy up and go for the ball. Second force fumble for Landis Durham. The junior out of Plano East. And Mon will go back to work with 341 to go. This is a big drive here for Mon. This offense has got to get some confidence going and got to see some production going into half. That was only the second South Carolina lost fumble of the season. Here's Travion Williams. Oh, he got stood up by TJ Brunson. Second in the league in tackles per game, 10 and a half coming in. The sophomore from Columbia. Brunson's a guy that Muschamp is saying his confidence is getting better. He said last year, I had more confidence in him than he had in himself. Obviously, we're seeing the numbers he's putting up. He's playing very confident next to Sky Moore and this linebacker crew that's, that's really been the, a bright spot on a South Carolina defense that I think is underachieved so far. They have struggled defensively this season. Uh, second and nine. Williams. Gain of five, maybe. Let's check in with Cole. Tom, some pretty good news on South Carolina wide receiver Terry Guzer. The South Carolina Sports Information Department has shared message that their team doctor, Jeff Guy, reports from Scott and White Hospital that Terry is moving all of his extremities and seems to be doing fine. He'll stay at Scott and White Hospital for further evaluation. Yeah, that's not just good news. That is sensational news. Guzer injured towards the tail end of the first quarter and was taken off the field on a backboard and to the hospital in an ambulance. Completion to the freshman wide receiver, Jamon Osmond. It goes for 10 and a first down with 225 left in the half. And a big first down. You can see him push the tempo here as Kellamon relays the play to his offensive line. And they'll run it again. Five that time for Williams, sophomore from Houston. Last year became the first true freshman in school history with a thousand yards. They've only had a handful give them a thousand yards in back-to-back -back seasons, and Williams is trying to join that exclusive crew. Keith Ford is in the game in the backfield now. Second down five. Sky Moore switches the coverage for South Carolina. Moore drops Reed Mon's eyes. And Amon has to leave the pocket. Looking to run. Got a great block and may have stepped out past the marker for the first down. Six yards scrambled. Tanner Shorp helped him out by sealing the edge. Look at him keep his right foot in right there. Great awareness along the sideline. AM has three timeouts. Three man rush for South Carolina to Ford. 
nowhere to go. Met immediately by DJ Wanham, who's stepping in at the strong side linebacker spot with Bryce and Allen Williams out. First time out, South I mean, correction, Texas A&M. Aggies take a timeout with 1.21 to go in the half. Kevin Semlin's team looking for some late offense. Got to find a lead again against South Carolina. It's a law firm I'd spend my money with, Dari Doring and Chiswick. Hang the shingle, fellas. Hey, coming up at the half, you can watch a live performance of the Fighting Texas Aggie Band. It's over on SEC Network Plus. You can start streaming now on the ESPN app. 121 to go in the half. Second and six here for Kellen Mond. Again, a three man rush. And incomplete. A little bit high that time. Trying to fit it into Aaron Hansford. Mond, 10 of 16 for 66 yards here in the first half. Came in in relief in the UCLA game after Nick Starkle was lost with a broken leg. Ford. Saw Starkle at the facility yesterday. He was getting around uh, pretty well after surgery. Seemed to be in good spirits. Timeout used by South Carolina trying to get the ball back. Fourth and one. Second charge timeout. South Carolina. That's a 30 second timeout. Lots to talk about for the boys in the studio tonight and Monday night. Monday's at 7 Eastern all season long. It's the latest thinking out loud with Greg and Marcus. They'll talk about all the football news of the week for both sides of the ball. You can participate with social media and live call-ins throughout the show. It's also on the ESPN app. And there might be a lot to talk about with what's going on in Baton Rouge tonight. Troy leads LSU 17 to nothing. And in Knoxville, oh, a game to forget for Balls fans. That was... The worst home loss in over a hundred years get blown out by Georgia. What's going on with this LSU offense? Oh, you know, the biggest question is how many quarterbacks they play tonight. Because I know they're going to mix it up a little bit and bring the freshman in. And Miles Brennan has indeed been on the field behind Danny Etling tonight. LSU has won 49 straight non conference home games, second longest streak. In the AP poll era, 43-yard punt, 103 to go. Okay, so you've got a freshman, or pardon me, a sophomore, Jake Bentley. He should be a freshman. He came out of high school early uh, at quarterback, and you get 63 seconds left. We saw how conservative Texas A&M was with their young quarterback last week at the end of regulation against Arkansas. What does Kurt Roper do with his youngster? Well, he's definitely a guy you can trust. So I know we got a minute. We got a. They got one timeout, so you got plenty of time if you use the field correctly. I think this first play, though, always when you're in a two-minute situation, easy completion or a run to see if you can spit eight to ten yards or so and get something going. You don't want a negative play to start a two-minute drive, especially with 103 and one timeout. Got to get something positive, got to get momentum going, and then you can start to take a few shots towards the sideline. Bentley threw for 304 against Kentucky a couple weeks ago, 295 last week against Louisiana Tech. They will run it up first down. AM was ready for it. Nothing gained with Tyson Williams. Usually that, that first play, as I said, kind of dictates what you're going to do. If that goes for eight or ten, they're probably going to push the pace, but you see him not, not really in a hurry right now. So negative play there. They'd be happy to take this one to the second half of that three-point lead. Injuries continue to be an issue for South Carolina tonight. Malik Young, the right tackle. He's on crutches on the sideline, according to Cole. So they've got DJ Park over there at right tackle. Corey Holmes, the senior right guard, didn't even make the trip due to an injury. And Zach Bailey is out the next couple of weeks. And three offensive linemen tonight. Still a big hole. And that's Tyson Williams who rips off 13. 14 seconds on the clock. Would you get Bentley out of the pocket? I, I wouldn't now. If that was the first play, yeah. then yes. But uh, they, they were content to let this one run out after that first negative play. And they're content to take it to the house. They've never beaten Texas A&M. And this is a South Carolina team. Hasn't won a game 
in Texas since 1957. They have a 10-7 lead at the half. Now it's taken to the lawyers. Dari, Dari, and Chiz. Guys, thank you much. You're watching Dr. Pepper Road to the Championship. Williams, he's in for the Aggies' first score of the night. Bentley pressured and taken down. Got a man! Touchdown, South Carolina! Welcome back to SEC Saturday Night, presented by Holiday Inn Express. Will Muschamp and his young quarterback looking for their second SEC road win of the season. Meanwhile, Kevin Sumlin and his youngster, signal caller, trying to find some offense. They were stagnant most of the first half. Welcome back, everybody. Tom Hart alongside Jordan Rogers. So if you're Kevin Sumlin or you're Will Muschamp, how do you get a young quarterback going? How do you keep one going? Well, you got to get Christian Kirk involved. He's only got one touch so far, and it was early in the game. South Carolina's doing a good job of covering him, bracketing him at times. They got to find ways to get him moving, get him motioning before the snap, and get your best playmaker the ball. That'll make it easy on the young quarterback. Well, this is the best playmaker on the field. It's Christian Kirk as Texas A&M receives a second half kickoff. And Kirk won't get a chance. They're going to keep this one short. It is dropped. But Texas A&M will have it at the 20-yard line. Calvin Klein, the backup tied in uh, with no, nothing on the return. Let's get to the field, check in with Cole. Tom spoke to Texas A&M head football coach Kevin Sumlin coming off the field. He said, we want to make life easier on Kellen Bond. We're putting him in bad situations. Want to make him comfortable. Doesn't like the spots they've been in on third down. He said, we need to mix it up on first down. Expect us to be different on first down here in the second half. Well, A&M just three of eight on third downs thus far tonight and Mon 10 completions but only 66 yards he's found more running backs as wide receivers than he has receivers thus far tonight Travion Williams gets a couple does that look different to you on first down doesn't look different at all I, 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 we haven't seen Kellen Mon yet with a design quarterback run all we've really seen are lateral passes six of his 10 completions so far to running backs got to get something going down the field. And I don't mean down the field like take a shot 40 yards. 5, 10, 15 yards. Easy throws. There's Kirk with a touch. But there may be one key reason why they are limiting Kellen Mond in the running game tonight in terms of designed or called quarterback runs. Jake Hubenek is his backup. And Hubenek has been banged up the last couple of weeks. So we don't know how active Hubenek can be. Right now he's wearing the headset and signaling in place. Behind Hubenek is a youngster by the name of Colton Taylor out of Houston Memorial. Taylor's a walkout. He's gotten zero reps with the first team. So you can't afford for Kellen Mond to go down. And Kellen Mond, listen at 210. I don't know if he's quite 210. I think he's closer to 200 pounds. So you worry about the physical tool, toll as well of running the football. They did a lot last year with Trevor Knight. Yep. We got a 22-year-old physically mature quarterback that can take a beating. Kellen Mond's not that guy. It doesn't mean you don't do it, but it means it's got to look different. And now they're going some tempo after the first down completion to Kirk. Travion Williams slices his way for a pickup of eight. Ben Williams grew up idolizing Jamal Charles, who's from Port Arthur, Texas. Played for the Longhorns and with the Chiefs and Broncos. And Ryan McCollum, one of the backup offensive linemen listed as the second string center, is banged up for Texas A&M. They will rotate in a lot of their second stringers on the O-line. And McCollum, the freshman at a Klein Oak High School in spring, is in a lot of pain. They're looking at his right ankle. Watch the lower left side of your screen for number 77. Ooh. Mm. That's never good. Never good when you get your ankle caught underneath someone, especially a big guy like that. I mean, you got 300 pounds sitting over ankle. That's. Uh, the good thing, though, they've been using a ton of freshman offensive linemen. So as, as you never want to see this as a quarterback or a head coach, there's a ton of guys with experience behind him. All those true freshmen are getting a lot of time. They're back to all five starters on the offensive line now. 
they will rotate in the second string and they like to do it kind of like a hockey line change and bring in their four backups all as one. Help to get them reps together during the week in practice running with the ones and running with Kellen Mond. Second down two. Mond has it in his hands. Mond has a first down and plenty more in the Gamecock territory. And a well designed play and a huge hole for Mond who covers 17 with his legs. And this is why the zone read can get you. You got a mobile quarterback. And crashes. Tuck it and go. You're going to see Keir Thomas get turned around here. He's trying to play both, but Mond and his speed can beat virtually anybody to the corner. There's Travion Williams. Couple that time. Jam Williams brings him down. Trips to the right side for Kellen Mond. Williams trying to cut back. And he's got to fight for four. Cole, what are you seeing out of the offensive line tonight for AM? No, playing physical football, but you mentioned those changes, Tom, and it's difficult to get on the same page. I spoke to offensive line coach Jim Turner while we were at the facility yesterday. He said, Listen, Cole, this isn't something I'm used to, something I really like, but I have to get guys ready. I need to build depth. This is the SEC. We're going to be going up against big physical defensive linemen week in and week out. And like you and Jordan just mentioned, guys are going to roll up on you, bigger bodies are going to fall on you. He said, I have to have guys ready to play. We haven't had that before years so he's trying to build that depth on third and five with the band playing going deep it is incomplete trying to find Kirk Chris Lamont's had the coverage one of the reasons and we've talked about this already the Texas A&M is so adamant about developing depth is the way the last three seasons have ended after fantastic starts and Kevin Sumlin said this is a change for me to try and uh, Try and build depth and play a lot of youngsters early. And as a result, we know, he knows just how important it is to get past that eight win plateau. Lamange is back at the 10. No return. 10-7, South Carolina with the lead. Thumbs up, howdy in Aggieland. South Carolina leads Texas A&M 10-7 here early in the third quarter. We're celebrating the 50th anniversary of integration in SEC football. And we look back to 1970. All right here at Texas A&M, Hugh McElroy was A&M's first black football player to start a game and score a touchdown. Helped the Aggies knock off number 12 LSU in 1970 with his 79-yard touchdown catch and run from Lex James. That was a 20 to 18 win for A&M in Baton Rouge. Jake Bentley going to work for South Carolina. Tyson Williams breaks free, high steps his way to the 40, spins his way to the 45, and then another great move to get into Aggie territory. And what a run, 34 yards for Tyson Williams, the North Carolina transfer. And there's a lot of folks in the ACC taking note of this one tonight. This is a shocking development. And Donnell Stanley makes that one happen, pulling from the right side. That's all Williams at the end there. Great block up front by the right guard, Donnell Stanley, though, pulling around. And springing that one for Williams. You heard Dari and the guys talk about it at the half. This was, um, I know we still got a half of football to play, but this is a result that most people didn't see coming. For South Carolina to have the lead in the second half against Texas A&M to come in here in front of 100,000 or so for Will Muschamp's team, which really struggled at home last week, and they lost at home the week before. Yeah, and, and watching film, I did not expect this out of Texas A&M's offense. And, and frankly, South Carolina's defense mm -hmm. hasn't been great. They've given up 200 and almost 80 yards passing the football, and Texas A&M hasn't been able to muster anything. Traveris Robinson was showing off his vertical. He's leaping and First leaping over there on the sideline. 
South Carolina. And South Carolina is going to use a timeout here. Will Muschamp's squad uses a timeout looking at a second and seven. Back to Aggieland in a moment. They had to come from behind against Louisiana Tech. Season started with great promise with a neutral site win against North Carolina State. On second and seven, Bentley deep into coverage. It is incomplete. What a fantastic job by Brian Edwards to knock that one away from Armani Watts, who's tied for the league lead in picks. And great job by Brian Edwards of playing defense there, because that one was in the crosshairs of Armani Watts. Just a bad decision by Jake Bentley here, trying to hit Edwards up the seam. And boy, that should have been an interception. Great job by Edwards making a play on the ball and saving his quarterback. Third down, seven. Bentley to the slant. Caught! First down for South Carolina, and Shai Smith takes it inside the 20. Similar to the way South Carolina started the game against Kentucky a couple weeks ago. That's just a great job by Jake Bentley here. He's got pressure coming on the left side of his screen, throws away from the pressure, has got a slant. Shai Smith, true freshman that's been playing really well. Probably the fastest guy on their roster. Second slant, he's caught with some room to run. Out of Union, South Carolina. They convert a big third down and Smith's third catch of the night. Tyson Williams gets bottled up after picking up a yard. As a young quarterback playing in this environment, what does it do for your confidence when you complete and convert on third? Oh, those are Tom, those are the best. When you got a crowd that's getting into it on third down and you hit a big play, that's the best silence you'll ever hear. But I'll tell you what, Jake Bentley's the kind of quarterback. There's nothing to rattle him. A hundred plus here could be all on their feet, yelling and screaming. That's exactly the environment he wants to play in. Pulls it back, looks over the middle, got it, touchdown, South Carolina. Or Trey Smith with the grab. And the Gamecocks take a two-score lead on a 13-yard strike. This is such a great play design here, play action. Got the running back coming across, and all the eyes of the defense go there. And Or Trey Smith sneaks right behind. The safety there for an easy touchdown. A six play, 80 yard drive. Chas Smith had the big one for 29 yards. That was on third down. And then Smith hauls it in for a touchdown. How about this look from Bentley? And he's even drifted to his left here. A big time throw to another true freshman making a play. Jake Bentley is thrown for a couple of touchdowns. The crowd of the scene has not been too much for him. And South Carolina has needed this. They've been lacking any type of downfield explosiveness from the passing game. And Bentley has been money today. Hitting true freshman, Shai Smith on a couple slant routes, and then another true freshman, 6'4", 220-pound Ortray Smith in the end zone there. That's, that's big. For a young quarterback to have two young, true freshman guys stepping up, making big plays, especially without Debo Samuel out there. And also without three starting offensive linemen tonight. It's a team that brings more pressure, converts on more pressure than anybody in the SEC. Jake Bentley, the sophomore from Opelika, Alabama, 13 to 21 for 218 and two scores. Engineered that game winning drive last week against Louisiana Tech. And after falling behind 7-0 on the road, South Carolina has ripped off 17 unanswered. So now Texas A&M back on offense. Kevin Sellin told Cole they wanted to look different on first down in the second half. In the first half, on 13 first downs, they threw it eight times and they ran five times. Here in the second half, they've run it all three times. They've had a first down. And you're going to see another run here. It's Bussy. No, it's Mon who pulls it back. 
And he's able to pick up three. What are they looking for offensively by turning to the run on first down? Well, you want positive yards. The, the goal for an offense on first down is four yards. Uh, when you got a young quarterback, that's not always easy uh, throwing the football. So trying to establish the run here up front so that opens up the play action pass for Kellen Mond to be able to actually push the ball downfield. So there's the number overall. Renol Mazzoni, the offensive coordinator for Texas A&M. Now third and four. And check with me to the sideline. And Mon changes it. Play clock in single digits. Mon waiting for the play to develop, has to scramble. Being chased. Won't be able to pick up a first down with his legs. DJ Wanham chased him out, and then Jam Williams forced him out of bounds. Mm. Will Muschamp and those Gamecocks are fired up on the visiting sideline. They haven't won a game in the Lone Star State since October of 1957 at number 20, Texas. Down late in the fourth quarter, able to come back and win. It's their only win in the state of Texas in South Carolina's program history. And at the time, the old timers will tell you that that was perhaps the biggest win in South Carolina history. Flags before the punt. False start. Kicking team, number 16. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. So Trapuca will try it again. Fourth and nine now. Fair catch at the 31. 42 yard punt. Let's take a look at the road to Atlanta brought to you by Mercedes Benz. A wild day in the league today. Florida rallied late to get by Vandy. It was closer than the final score indicated, I believe. Del Rio lost for the season with a collarbone injury. Georgia went to Rocky Top and flattened it. 41 0. Georgia stays undefeated. Auburn got by Mississippi State by 39. A couple of tough losses for the Bulldogs lately. Meanwhile, Kentucky had to get past Eastern Michigan by four. And uh, down on the bayou, Troy, with five and a half to go in the fourth quarter, leads LSU 24-14. Is that the biggest surprise of the day? I, I mean, the biggest surprise has been the SEC West. Mississippi State, back-to-back -back weeks. Going down, Auburn now trending in the right direction. LSU down 10. I mean... Here's, see West is all over the place. Here's a number for you. It's been 6,217 days since LSU last lost at home to a, a non-conference team. That was against UAB in September of 2000. Watson Brown's old squad. Second down, 12. Alabama dominating Ole Miss early second quarter 27 3 by the way Gamecocks find nothing Clemens with the stop third and 14 Tom Michael Clemens the number one junior college defensive end in the country had high hopes for that young man coming in as an early enrollee got here in the summer Hasn't lived up to the billing yet because he's been a little bit nicked up with a high ankle sprain. Saw some of his potential on that play. Well, this third and 14 is a down that some of those great pass rushers for each program in recent history would love. Pressure coming on Bentley, and it's incomplete. Look at the two studs. Gold's talking about pass rushers from the end. Look at the two studs who came out of each program over the last handful of seasons. You won't find much better than this. Clowney, 24 sacks, second in school history. And Miles Garrett, who went first overall last year, broke his freshman record for sacks. Tom, I played against that guy on the left there. <laughs> I'll tell you what. How'd that work out for you? We never called a protection. 
I walked them to the line of scrimmage. I saw where Clowney was, and I slid the entire line that direction every time. AM almost got that one, and Kirk will let it go. And this is going to turn into a great punt for South Carolina. Was your heart rate a little bit different when Jadavion Clowney was on the other side? Absolutely. 56-yard punt that time. Aggies were a fingertip away from getting this one. Riley Garner just missed it as the Aggies look for some momentum uh, to try and get it from their offense after this. The ESPN app is a fan's best friend. You can stream every ESPN and ABC college football game live. That's at home, on the go, access to scores. News highlights all season long. You can download the ESPN app to start streaming now. Back to work for Kellen Mond, freshman out of San Antonio via IMG Academy of Florida. Pressure coming from the edge. Mond over the middle, and it is incomplete. It was coming from the edge. It was coming straight up the middle, and Jam Williams got to him. And this is something that I've been keeping an eye on. When we're watching film, we notice the offensive line for Texas a and changes their splits in relation to what they're doing. On a pass play, these offensive linemen are about 12 inches apart. Usually, the offensive linemen are two feet or so. They are cutting their splits to try to shore up this pocket in front of Kellen Mond, keep pressure out of his face. Mond with the read, takes off and scrambles nearly for a first down. And then on run plays, you notice that one or two of the guards widen their split and the other doesn't so you get a good tip on what they're doing every single play and that that may be why South Carolina seems to beat them with a punch every time they're trying to run up the middle and play in coverage when they're passing South Carolina's uh, doing a tremendous job defensively overall tonight behind Traveris Robinson their defensive coordinator here's Keith Ford Cole how does that play out as an offensive lineman well, it obviously gives the defensive line a beat on what you're trying to do, but I was as confused as Jordan was, and I asked offensive line coach Jim Turner about it. He said, yeah, I'm trying to tighten the pocket. I don't want to give up twists and pass rush, so we tighten them down. Out to Kirk. And Kirk brought down by Williams after gain of six. Here's what Jordan and Cole are talking about. The offensive line splits up front. This right here. That, that, is a run, that is a run play. Look how tight this lineman is, the guard to the center. Look on the other side. That's what we're talking about right there. That, it, it, when you're on the field, it's right in front of you. You see that. Play action, Mon, able to get it to the perimeter. Tom, I, I'm not kidding. I'm up here in the booth and I can see it. I can see it from up here. So if, if you're down on the field, it's obvious. And that, that's something that you got to be able to self scout and realize when you're tipping things, not obvious. Cole, shouldn't the offensive lineman have some awareness to that, too? We'll let you answer it after this first down play. Mod has all day. Pocket holds well. And then some pressure. He feels it and gets taken down. I mean, it's one thing for the coaches to self scout and see it, but can't you self police yourself? And be aware of that as a, as a lineman? There's no doubt. You should have an idea of what your split should be on every play. Ours were two-foot splits, and your toe was halfway down the foot of the center. So my guard's toes were halfway down my foot, two feet away. And if I saw him tightening up on me, I would look at my left guard or my right guard and say, hey, widen out a little bit, widen out. It does tighten the pocket some, but it also closes the edge and gives you a, a closer edge to the quarterback rushing a defensive in and outside linebacker. Outside. Damian Ratley. You saw it coming, J. Raj. You can just I mean, from up here, you can see the splits. Eric McCoy gets his helmet knocked off there, but they are so tight and so much obvious. Or it's so obvious how tight these guys are on a pass play. Look at the surface of the offensive line. And now I get it. When you got a young quarterback that can move, you don't mind if something comes off the edge because he can make a guy miss in space and get outside the pocket. You want to keep everything clean in front of his face, but man, if I can see it up here, it's going to be a run. Robert Congo now at left guard and Ryan McCollum back in at center. And Mon takes it past the line of game and gets ridden down for a gain of three and a first down. DJ Smith is there. Left guard on that one gave it up. I know it's third and one, but I can see it from up here. This is a zone read. 
Mon reads that in, crashing down, keeps it. Notice how right there, thought about throwing it. When you have the zone read, that's an option. Quarterback can keep it. You see he's reading this end, going to keep it, and he's got the option to throw it, does a smart thing and tuck it. He only needs a yard there. They've gone awfully deep on that offensive line. They've played at least seven guys tonight. Mon couldn't make a miss, and Sky Moore blows it up. A loss of three. <laughs> Sky Moore's played some football now. He's not going to get fooled by his own read. You get him once, you're not going to get him many times. And that's what happens when, when, when a quarterback starts getting in a rhythm with zone read. You start playing more games up front, and you start playing more conservative, or, or playing both, or playing what we call the mesh on the backside. So you give the quarterback a gray read, and right there, Mon made the wrong decision. 55th play of the night for Texas A&M's offense. Gamecocks defense was on the field for 99 plays week one against NC State. Mon on the run. And he gets taken down from behind and awkwardly for a gain of three. And great hustle. Chase him down from behind. Tom, they're trying. They're trying to take some shots. They're trying to get Mon's eyes downfield, run some combinations, but Nobody's separating right now. And South Carolina is playing good coverage, mixing things up, especially third and long here. Wouldn't be surprised if we saw an extra man come, five man pressure with a little coverage behind it. Aggies have converted five first downs, three of them via the pass. This is the 11th play of the drive. Mon hands it off. This is Williams. And he's cut down short of the marker on a gain of seven. Rashad Fenton there for the tackle. From his quarterback spot. I, I, I keep my offense on the field here, Tom, but it looks like you're gonna choose choose to take the points. Uh, I, I guess it's can't disagree with them there, but it just felt like this is a moment where they needed some momentum. Felt like they had a little momentum going, driving down. Well, I know we're still in the third quarter, but down ten, you're gonna need a field goal at some yep. point. Daniel the camera with eight makes is tied for fifth. In the FBS, this would be from 46. His long this year is 48. And the camera is able to bring this one back and through. And when he makes it like that, it always makes an offensive coordinator and head coach look like they made the right decision. Yeah. I'm a gambler, man. If I if me as an offensive coordinator, I wouldn't make a lot of people happy. Well, you know, would, would you call it differently if the road team instead of the home team? You probably would. Probably. Yeah, absolutely. They'll fire the cannon after that make from the camera, his ninth field goal of the season. And that closes a 12-play, 55-yard drive to make it a touchdown game again. And you know, Tom, fourth and three there, if it was fourth and two, that may, may, may make that decision yeah. a little different. Three, that's a, that's a long three, right? One and a half or two, you can think about running the football, getting on outside the pocket. But three, as much as it sounds like not much of a difference, it's a big difference in the mind of an offense. Well, there's the 12th man, Cullen Gillespie, a junior from Katy, Texas, out of Taylor High School. Following in the footsteps of E. King Guild, came out of the stands back in 1922 against Center College and was able to suit up when the Yankees were down to just 11 healthy bodies. One of the best traditions in all in college football. On the kickoff team and also starting Sam linebacker. Let's take a look at Cullen Gillespie's journey fueled by Pilot Flying J. Gillespie was originally headed to the Ivy League, decided to walk on here and then earned the right to wear number 12 and cover kickoffs. Another start at special teams. Had a big fumble recovery at the end of the South Carolina game last year to ice the game. You know, R.C. Slocum was honored at the half, former Aggie head coach. He incidentally, brought Kevin Sumlin into the mix here as his wide receivers coach years ago. And since they went to the 12th man in the jersey and uh, that honor, 12th man has never scored a touchdown for Texas A&M, dating back to the Slocum era. Bentley is pressured, and they trip him up. Somehow he flipped it free. 
It was Ataro Olaka got to him. Was he down? They say yes. He was down at the 18 yard line. It's a dangerous play by Bentley just to heave it. It's a loss of seven. And they're trying for the pop pass here to 81, Hayden Hurst. This is. Ooh. What do you got? It's close. And now it's getting loud, second and 17. Edwards came back for it, another. Nope, incomplete. They couldn't haul it in going across the sideline. Charles Oliver had the coverage. And a great job by Charles Oliver on the outside. You're taught as a corner. Even when that ball hits the chest or in the hands of the receiver, you got to split the hands. Look at that last push. That should have been a completion. Great job splitting the hands. Listen in to what Jake Bentley's hearing and seeing now. They needed 17 and they gave it to Tyson Williams who finds seven. And now you can kind of feel that momentum start the ship. It may have started with the field goal to make it a one score game. Now the Aggie defense stands. You're going to have Christian Kirk with a punt return opportunity. That's a big stop for Texas A&M on defense. That's, a, that's what they needed. You're going to head into the fourth quarter here. Just down a score. Christian Kirk has five career punt return touchdowns. It's second among players active in the FBS right now. He'll get a chance to blow the lid off Kyle Field when we return 17 10 after three. Let's take a look at our 15 minutes or less brought to you by Geico. Set up for the fourth quarter here. Texas A&M was able to open the score and take a 7 0 lead. The Gamecocks on this Jake Bentley scramble and heave, though. Able to tie it up, a 45-yard touchdown pass. And then Bentley was at it again. This time, he found Ortre Smith. And South Carolina had the lead. A&M has made it interesting and now forcing a punt. As they saw Varsity's horns, Jordan, for the first time, you can feel the press box sway. It's a, it's a different feeling here, isn't it? I didn't think that. I thought you were kidding. No. <laughs> I started standing level, and I'm shaking. And this is the new part of the building. We're moving a little bit wider over there. High kick and a beauty, and Kirk won't have a chance. Scott Moore downs it at the 44 yard time, the 44 yard line. It was a 31 yard punt that time from Joseph Charlton out of AC Flora High School. Most importantly, able to keep it away from Kirk. So Kellen Mon, who threw the game winner against Arkansas last year, or last week, I should say, in overtime. We'll try to engineer a Texas A&M comeback. That was a fourth quarter thriller last week against the Hogs. And huge for the confidence of a young quarterback, especially that, that fourth, and fourth and three. Where they checked to the sideline and said, you know what, I'm going to put this one on my young quarterback through a big slant. Things like that go so far for the confidence of a young quarterback. So imagine his coaching staff has all the confidence in him right now. He likes his old high school teammate, Jamon Osmond, in those scenarios. Looking deep down the sideline, gets pressured. And Mon trying to find some space. Beautiful cutback. He's right up the middle for a first down run. Gain of 18 for Kellen Mond. This, this, is, this is so good, Tom, right here. Getting pressure off the edge. And he stays his ground, dips his shoulder, and then takes off vertically. That's why you hesitate at times to pressure a young quarterback that's that athletic because he can make you pay for it. Kirk leaves the backfield. Mon finds him there, gets two blocks down the field, and Christian Kirk is inside the 20. And a Texas a and first down, but a flag coming all the way back at the 37-yard line. It's a gain of 20 if it stands. Cameron Buckley was in the vicinity of that flag. Holding offense, number 14. 
10 yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay, first down. Killer. Yeah, that's a, that's a true freshman on the outside there. That's, oh man. What do you think? I, don't, I mean, as a, as a receiver, you're getting in the way of guys. Don't ever chase and hold a guy, especially when you got a guy like Christian Kirk with the ball in his hands. But I don't know if they're, that a little ticky tack there for me. I, I wasn't down there on the field, so it didn't get all the angles, but it's a tough one on the outside. So it's a 30 yard difference with the penalty. And now they'll try to run it on first and 20. Pickup of three that time for Travion Williams. And that holding penalty changes everything on this drive for Texas A&M. Six-yard strike to Ratley. Senior coming through huge for Texas A&M. And now Travion Williams pushes his way to the 15. And what you didn't see here is Christian Kirk running up the hash there. Takes all the defenders out of the way. Great job by Kellamon to buy some time, stay patient. And find Damian Ratley over the middle. Kirk has been targeted seven times, four catches tonight, but he's played a fantastic role as a decoy and clearing space. Coaches credit the job that he does by getting those eyes open up the running game and the passing game. On second and seven, Mon will oh. run for a first down. Mon will run for a touchdown. And the Aggies an extra point away from tying it up. Flag down at the two. We might have targeting on Cameron Buckley here. Yeah. Personal foul. Targeting. Number 14. That's the closest And the key there that it happened before the score would have been a post play penalty. And they're going to take another look at this and see if it'll hold up. And there's the penalty, and Mon was a yard shy of the goal line. That's the first thing we're looking at. Now we're going to go back and look if it's targeting, and well, I, I don't see it. You see contact? I mean, the, there's definitely contact helmet to helmet. You know, is he getting him in the shoulder that's pads what, first? And, 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 the and face that's what's mask? hard to see here, because he's definitely coming up, you, you know. He's coming up through that short that front shoulder pad, but and it is his is it his arms and upper body that hits first is a crown of the helmet so We can see here You know white on white can be tough to distinguish sometimes Yeah it, that look I think crown of the helmet starts at the top of the face mask bars so that looks like yeah. crown of the helmet to me Yeah, it does and that's <laughs> You got a young true freshman out there that's playing full speed trying to make a play. I don't think there was any intent there, but not sure that block would have changed the outcome either. So that's a good point. 
The second time he's flagged on this drive and Buckley uh, with an ejection. We missed the first half against Alabama next week as the tie comes to town. It would take a score off the board here. And you uh, that's a key too on this play because Mon was not yet in the end zone and you heard Matt Leffler our referee say that it happened before the score could have been a post score penalty and change things up but targeting is the call and uh, as always they're reviewing it to make sure it holds and I believe it'll it'll be upheld uh, just based on those last couple looks we had you got a defenseless defender there. Got to keep your your hat and your helmet away After from you. It was targeting. So Buckley with a couple of key penalties on this one. A holding penalty erased a first down earlier and cost them 30 yards. They were able to convert later. This is him on the edge trying to block for Kirk. Nice. And then the targeting. Got Jersey there and then has his hat too high on this one as well. Refs got it right. That's just those are huge plays momentum wise for Texas A&M. Kevin Sumlin vehemently disagrees. Back to action. Mon pressured will scramble. First down, and AM keeps the drive alive on the run by the freshman. It's a gain of eight. So first and goal, AM. And South Carolina's got to start putting somebody on Mon. It wasn't this play they were playing zone there, but the previous touchdown that was negated was a man pressure. Nobody's eyes on Mon. They got to have somebody, especially down here in the red zone, always with their eyes on a, on a quarterback that could hurt you that bad with his legs. The malfunctioning clock. We've got 13 minutes and 13 seconds on the board. Seemed like the clock stopped running. And we'll see if they can figure it out. After a couple of penalties, the uh, 12th man's a little juiced in here tonight, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that one is nobody's fault, and they still didn't like it. We're going to have a timeout. They'll try to figure out the clock. AM and will be looking at a first and goal down a score in the fourth quarter. Since October 21st of 1905. That's SEC Inside, pre presented by Regions Bank on the SEC Network and streaming live on the ESPN app. Texas AM seemingly had a score a few plays ago, but a targeting penalty wiped out the score and backed the Aggies up. Now they've converted since then, and Kellen Mond's looking at a first and goal. Play clock's at three. Here's Ford straight ahead. Motoring, pushing, shoving, and Ford is in. Touchdown, Texas AM and Keith Ford. So Texas A&M had a big gain wiped off because of a hold. They had a touchdown wiped out because of a targeting. And still, they're able to come through. And a point after from Daniel LaCamera is as close as we are to tying it up. What an effort. McCoy, McCollum, Shorp, everybody up there pushing. That's just effort. That's want to. That's a, that's a bunch of guys that, that take things in their own hand. 
get out of their own way three times big plays called back it's a good way to finish off and that is legal in college football these days you can get along with a little help from your friends they're reviewing it again to see if the ball broke the plane <laughs> it'll be tough to tell with all those bodies down there yeah I and mean, we can give you some great looks but until somebody starts uh, carrying a GoPro inside their helmet, I don't know if we can climb in there. See McCoy, McCollum, and short ball chipping in there at the end. I don't have him down to the very end when he landed on his back and at that point it looked like yeah. his head was all the way over the goal line still churning still churning still up. Oh yeah. I don't use any question. After the review the ruling on the field stands it's a touchdown. So the camera to tie it up. And with 12 27 to go, it's 17 all. We got a flag on the play. Multiple flags, actually. Well, there's no question that the expectations are always high here in Aggieland. And for head coach Kevin Sumlin, if he wasn't already aware, he became acutely aware of it this past spring when his director of athletics, Scott Woodward, took a set next to Paul Feinbaum and uttered these comments. Coach knows he has to win, and he has to win this year, and we have to do better than we've done in the past. As far as wins and losses, you know, Paul, you'll never pin me to that. We just have to get to that next level. I mean, eight and five for a lot of people is good enough. Yeah. It's not for Texas A&M. And I think that's the key. Eight and five, good for a lot of people, not for Texas A&M. Now the $500 million redo of this fantastic stadium. And will you consider where they've been over the last three years? Sensational starts, crippling finishes. Which makes this, especially with the upcoming schedule, a must win for Texas A&M. Incox fight over it. And A.J. Turner brings it out. And he gets lit. Special teams wallop from Anthony Hines. And the momentum belongs to the 12th man and on that Aggie sideline now. Hopefully they figured out who wanted it. <laughs> but boy, I was playing fast on the backside there. It's going to be important this drive. South Carolina has not been able to run the football. They have to establish some kind of Dominance up front. Here's what it's like being a quarterback in the SEC. Listen in. That's if the clock operator can hear him.
Trayton punches a sack, then a gain of 13. And now third down, it's going to get loud again. And a ton of energy on the outside by these rushers for Texas A&M. They're not bringing pressure. They're getting back there with four. and second down they're able to get pressure with four this time they actually do bring pressure gonna see these linebackers cross dog and Tara Lockett comes clean on the Jake Bentley we got a flag on the play Kirk won't have a chance to return this one wow it takes an Aggie hop and the Aggies one way or another gonna end up with fantastic field position we'll see what the flag is two sacks on that possession for the Texas A&M defense Alaka got one, Kiki got the first. On the kicking team. That five yard pedal will be enforced from the end of the kick. First down, timeout. Kingsley Kiki brought the pressure on first down. Then it was Otaro Alaka with his second sack of the season, planting Jake Bentley in the Kyle Field turf. Snug, late. the pilots that brought in the F-18s from over the top. <laughs> At least one of them's Nagy. You see him, you see him at the 20-yard line. A couple of them are. They came in from Naval Station Norfolk there uh, off of the aircraft carrier, the Harry S. Truman. It was loud early, and it's loud late. And what is a key game for Texas A&M and this entire coaching staff they got Alabama coming in next. They got four ranked teams on the docket right around the corner after this one. And they're trying to hold on to home field advantage, and it is an incredible home field advantage. And the field position for Texas A&M has been great. They start in South Carolina territory. Kellen Mond, the freshman quarterback, will hand off on first down. And Keith Ford had a touchdown on the last possession. Fights for two. Gonna have to throw the ball here at some point. 64 plays thus far, 40 on the ground, 24 through the air. Or pardon me, uh, yeah, 24 through the air and Mon 16 completions for 122 yards. And if you're Noel Mazzoni, you want to manage his eyes. Easy one-two reads. We'll put a ton of pressure on him to scan the whole field. Ford bottled up, and he'll go backwards. Lost the one. Let's check in with Cole. Guys, not much on that run play there, but keep in mind what Noel Mazzoni told us in our meetings yesterday, that rotating offensive lines, he saw a big difference late in that Arkansas game with just how fresh they were. Rotating again today, that could pay off big here late in the fourth quarter. Yeah, you take 14 or 15 reps off those O-line men's plate. They're feeling a little better in the fourth quarter. The Aggies have converted 5 of 13 on third down. Pressure coming up the middle. Complete room to run for Osmond. Jamarcus King gambled and freshman to freshman teammates from IMG Academy Kellen Mond and Jamon Osmond moved the change with a gain of 21. When you're a young quarterback you work with your comfort zone and that's a guy you were throwing the football to in high school. It's a stop route man coverage trust your guy to win. Here's Ford. Ford almost broke free as it is he's able to pick up seven. Aggies took the lead with 4.33 to go in the second quarter. And then South Carolina grabbed it back, and AM hadn't been back there since. 
Two big sacks in this fourth quarter for South Carolina. Ford straight ahead. And he is in again. Second touchdown run for Keith Ford. Aggies back in front. Has Keith Ford been a spark or what? Run after run, he's finishing with physicality and once again taking three Gamecock guys into the end zone. Boy. Chapuka will hold the camera for the point after. And AM reclaims the lead. The Gamecocks have an answer. Ford's running strong. Two touchdowns in the fourth quarter. Well, the Aggies uh, have a tendency to make the fourth quarter a lot of fun, don't they? Shoot out with Arkansas last week when it got really interesting. And tonight, Keith Ford, a couple of fourth quarter touchdown runs. Their defense has been sensational. Two sacks of Jake Bentley on the same drive. And uh, all the hankies are waving here now at Kyle Field. Texas A&M back in front. And giving the ball back to South Carolina with a 24-17 lead. Steam to the 30 before he gets tripped up. South Carolina is trying to find that magic that they had in the fourth quarter last week. They did nothing through the first three, and tonight they've gone backwards in the fourth quarter as the AM offense has come alive. Yeah, Tom, they just can't protect Jake Bentley right now, so wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, seven and a half minutes left. You don't need to play in a hurry, have a sense of urgency, but. Wouldn't be surprised if they add or keep in a few extra blockers here if they are going to try to press the ball downfield or get Jake Bentley outside the pocket. Almost intercepted. It was Armani Watts who laid out for it. So South Carolina's offense hasn't done much of note here in the fourth quarter, but here is. And just not, not a good decision, not a good throw by Jake Bentley. Number 24, Priest Willis had coverage over the top. You got to move on from that. It's a great look if you have a man-on-man -man situation. The guy's beat, but that throw's either got to be back shoulder or to the check down. Bentley pressure. Third sack of the quarter for the Aggies defense. Zaykov and Henderson got him that time, and it's a loss of eight. And Tom, this is just all effort. There, there's nothing special, there's nothing tricky about this. You got, you got four or five guys rushing the passer, and that's just effort. Man on man beating somebody. You don't have any choices. Screen, handoff, hope it, hope it spits. They bring six. Bentley senses it. Nothing he can do. Jared Johnson that time. Seventh sack of the night for Texas A&M. And just pressure from every angle for Jake Bentley. They even brought pressure from Willis there over the slot from the field. But Jarrett Johnson winning. Two or three guys finishing it off. Fourth sack in the last two possessions. The Texas A&M defense. 
Kirk says stay away from it. And South Carolina is going to put it in the hands of the defense. It's 5.55 to go after that 53-yard punt. A lot of yelling going on in Aggieland tonight. Under six minutes to go, fourth quarter from Kyle Field, and Texas A&M leads South Carolina 24-17. But we've got some great news for South Carolina fans. For more, let's go down to Cole on the sideline. Tom, South Carolina wide receiver Terry Guzer has been released from Scott and White Hospital in College Station. So great news to hear that he's going to be out of the hospital tonight and hopefully back with his teammates soon. All right, Cole, thanks. Guzer was injured, uh, injured with 5.54 to go in the first quarter, taken off the field on a backboard and taken away on an ambulance in a scary sight. Aggies will try to use some clock here. And they'll do it by giving it to Trayvon Williams. And Trayvon Williams is able to pick up three. Important here if you're South Carolina. TJ Brunson, Sky Moore, both the linebackers got to have eyes on Kellen Mond. Got to trust up front is going to stop the run. You can't let him beat you in this type of situation with his feet. Mond has rushed for 84 yards tonight. That's six yards a carry on 14 carries. And he's usually done it, as you mentioned, by eluding the pressure. Here comes Sky Moore from the edge. Mond gets taken down by Moore right at the line of scrimmage. So this is a Texas A&M team that's trying to get to nine wins this season for head coach Kevin Sumlin. Three and one right now, and here's what's up next. Four ranked teams, including undefeated Alabama, coming in next. Alabama having no issues with Ole Miss tonight. They go to Florida for the first time since the 60s. Mississippi State has struggled lately, but that is a gauntlet for this squad. And Auburn, looks like things are clicking now. A couple weeks ago, Mississippi State looked that way too, but mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's what the SEC is right there. SEC West, you're going to have that every single year. Momentum can change in a hurry in this league, huh? <laughs> On third and seven, Mond. First down, Texas A&M, and freshman Kelly Mond. Why is it so hard to stop? <laughs> because this is not only a read play, but you got a blocker or two pulling for you. Call this the counter read. So he's reading front side, you can hand it off. If he gets the look, he's keeping it. He's got two guys, two offensive linemen pulling ahead of him. It's a great call there. Keaton Southern out front, and I know Southern has impressed you tonight, Cole, huh? The last two touchdown runs, he has had huge blocks collapsing the right side of that offensive line. He's been very impressive, Tom. Junior from Flower Mound, Texas. Fresh set of downs for the Aggies. Mon trying to throw. It gets deflected and caught, and Osmond's able to take it for a first down. Everything has gone the Aggies way here in the fourth quarter, it seems. And, and Tom, it's the exact same play. The exact same play. This is the freedom to give Kellen Mond. He's got the opportunity to run this. It's the counter read again. Instead, he pulls and throws. Doesn't have the look he wants, so backside, he's got what we call a now route, a looky route. So he can hand off, he can keep it, and he can throw it on yep. the same play. Uh huh. That's what a mobile quarterback can do for you. Carolina comes up big. Sky Moore in there. Cole, why is the counter so important to Texas A&M? Well, first off, you have two pulling offensive linemen that get out in front. You have lead blockers. But the options that Kellen Mond has that Jordan just pointed out, Tom, this play absolutely gutted Arkansas a week ago. Kellen Mond's big run was on a zone read counter. Travion Williams' touchdown in the second half, a zone read counter. On top of that, you can put in a counter cue where the quarterback's not going to have the option to hand it off, and he can just follow those blockers, so it's more of a power play. We haven't even really seen that yet, but that's something that can be an addition to that play later on for Texas A&M that gives him even more options. Counter cue, meaning the quarterback is the ball carrier in that scenario. Second and 12 now for Texas A&M. And Mond out to the perimeter. Rackley. He gets hog-tied. At the 36-yard line, able to get four. Jam Williams there to bring him down, and a timeout used by South Carolina. 
with 205 and the clock still rolling. And they might put a few ticks back on that clock. As Will Muschamp and company were trying to get it stopped. Timeout, South Carolina. Please reset the game clock to 205. 205 in the game clock, please. All right, so that makes sense. 24 17, third and eight coming up for Texas AM. And a conversion here, you know, really could be the game. Meanwhile, South Carolina's defense had a great first half. Uh, some more success for te Texas A&M in the second half. Well, what's been the biggest key for the Aggies in their offensive success since the half? Well, I think it's Kellen Mond being able to run the ball. You just see how that opens up their offense. It, it allows for now more space on the outside when you're throwing to guys. Uh, you got two lead blockers running for you. Anytime the quarterback gets going, it opens up everything from the passing game to the running back as well. Jake Bentley's going to get the ball back here, but in, and the question is whether or not they're down a touchdown or more. But he's been put on his back now four times here in the fourth quarter. How can you put that out of your mind as a quarterback? Well, it's really tough. Is there anybody that can do it? It's Jake Bentley, but you got to bring some help to the table. They got to bring more blockers to the point of attack to clean things up for Bentley. Because it, it, he could be a guy that can bring you back in this game. Depending on how much they're down here at the end of this drive, they're not out of it. But He's got to be upright to do so. And, and right now, even with four-man pressures, Texas A&M is hitting home time and time again. Gamecocks need to get the ball back. This is a third and eight for A&M. And they come up big with a big-time stop to hold Texas A&M. It's a loss of one. Final charge timeout, South Carolina. And so South Carolina using their timeouts on defense to try to preserve some clock, which you, you certainly understand from a clock management standpoint, because then they'll be in control on the offensive side. But you have a young quarterback now without any margin for error once you get the ball back here. Yeah, it's uh, I mean, you're going to have to protect Jake Bentley. You're gonna, this is you know what's interesting. Right here is the decision you make. 54 yard attempt from here to give or give or take. And right. the camera as long as 48 coming into this. And it's fourth and nine. So yeah. <laughs> you don't have a good situation either way. But with how your defense is playing. Well, and Trapuca was magnificent at pinning guys deep last season, and he's been really good at it this year. So let your defense play. Sure. Right? They've been playing so well. Don't think about going for it. Don't think about a field goal. Even though it would be tempting this far on the other side of South Carolina's territory, but allow your defense to do what it's been doing since really the middle of the third quarter. Getting pressure on Bentley and stopping the South Carolina offense. Three inside the 20 tonight. They're going to give it back to Jake Bentley with no timeouts left and an offensive line that's been a sieve against this Aggie pressure here late. It'd be a big weekend for a Shane Trapuca. Spends a lot of time at the Jersey Shore. No, well, Paulie D was in town last night. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> the DJ show. <laughs> Delay game on the offense. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. That's where you went. You <laughs> I, weren't at dinner. I was wondering where you were. Yeah. You went to Pauly D, huh? No, I went to Sir Mixlot. Pauly D just happened to be, oh. be there. <laughs> who opened for who? Joelle was there. Yeah, she was. <laughs> she was the one that, that tipped us off to it. We're thinking about going to get a steak. She's like, wait, you guys aren't going to Pauly D? <laughs> I hadn't thought about it. Comes from a uh, an athletic family. His dad was a wide receiver at Boston College, and the senior from Allen, Texas, used to play in front of big crowds, 23,000 a night in high school, 50,000 in the state championship game. And Trapuca got put on his back, but no flag. It carries into the end zone and a touchback. 41-yard punt, putting the ball in the hands of Jake Bentley and he's almost had it taken away by these AM defenders they've been all over him especially in the fourth quarter yeah they've been coming from every angle and, and, and like most instances it's just four guys at times like that one there they brought pressure but they have been getting home on the edges Jared Johnson Landis Durham been playing so well off the edge and it is it is nearly all effort yeah. I mean, it's not that South Carolina is blowing protections where they're bringing one extra guy they're just beating the man. Man on man, they're winning right now. Texas a and is. South Carolina's run 50 offensive plays. They've been sacked seven times. Five additional tackles for loss. No timeouts for South Carolina. Under two minutes to go. Down a touchdown.
Quick hitter to the outside and Edwards and he's able to fight and fight and he's able to pick up a first down. What an effort by the sophomore Brian Edwards. 140 to go as the clock stops for a moment. And him only brought four that time. With the dial up pressure again, or is that too risky? Bentley over the middle. Caught Hurst in another South Carolina first down. Back to back strikes to Edwards and Hurst, his two most reliable receivers. Pressure now. Bentley crossing route flag on the play as Edwards is able to take it out to set up a nice second down. But we'll see if this is a holding against South Carolina. Or the four in the backfield on the offense. That's a five yard penalty. So first down. They'll set a gain of five. They lose five after the flag. First and 15, 114 to go. Continue to keep an eye on number 81. Right side of your screen, Hayden Hurst. One of Bentley's favorite targets. Lined up at the slot in front of Edwards. Bentley out route Hurst, and he's out of bounds. Stop the clock with 102 to go. Six thousand strong at Kyle Field tonight. And I'm going to bring pressure up the gut here. Bentley, back foot, sideline toss. He was inching to leave the pocket and really take off a little bit. Remember, he had a huge third down run last week against Louisiana Tech as he directed the fourth quarter comeback. Yeah, he wanted to step up to the right here, but Texas A&M running cross dog, so that second linebacker really fills that void of where Bentley would be able to step up and escape. Nowhere to go but throw the football out of bounds. There. Third down, 12. Seven sacks tonight for A&M. Coming again to the backside. Bentley tripped up. Stays on his feet, and he takes it all the way out to the logo on a gain of seven. Clock run at 46. Bentley might be banged up. Fourth and five. Bentley over the middle, tipped, and incomplete. Texas A&M's pressure pays off again. Saw nearly every snap of that drive. They were bringing pressure up the gut, right in Bentley's face, not allowing him to step up and escape. John Chave is dialing it up. Dotson, Tyrell Dotson, the sophomore from Franklin, Tennessee, got his hands on it. How hard is that as a quarterback when you've just had to scramble? Right, you've had to run the ball, you've taken a hit, and now you gotta get up and try to convert in fourth and five. Yeah, and he took a good hit. And you got guys coming up in your face, it's it's not easy. Jake Bentley is a tough son of a gun and a competitor. That was a great last drive by John Chavis there, bringing pressure up the gut time and time again. Huge win for Kevin Shovelin and Texas A&M for the third week in a row. The Aggies trailed at the half and came back to win. Change of pace from their opening loss to UCLA. Aggies go to four and one. They've got Alabama coming in next. And a win keyed by their defense. And a monster fourth quarter from John Chavis's defense by getting on Jake Bentley. Seven sacks overall tonight for the Aggies. Not quite the wrecking crew. That uh, it's a big moniker to live up to. They came pretty close tonight. 
24-17, emotional night in many ways tonight for Texas A&M and what is a must-win game for head coach Kevin Sumlin when you look at what's left for the schedule and what's expected of his program this season. In addition, he lost one of his mentors, Joe Tiller, who passed away earlier today back at his home in Buffalo, Wyoming. And he's standing by Kevin Sumlin's with Cole Kublik. Coach Sumlin. Nice job. Man. Saying hello to Coach Traveris Robinson there quickly. Coach Sumlin. How proud are you of this defensive line in their effort tonight? Well, you know, as a team, but I thought our defense, you know, we, we uh, played the run pretty well, gave up some big plays, but uh, uh, these guys just kept playing. Uh, they, they've been giving great effort all year, and execution's been a big deal. And, you know, to, to come from behind and keep playing the way they were playing, our crowd was fabulous tonight. And, uh, you know, it really was a home of the 12th man. I think it made a difference. You told me at halftime you needed to make some adjustments, do some things different for Kellen to make him more comfortable in the second half. Some huge runs. Is there a point in time when you say, just go out there and make some plays, young man? Yeah, yeah, I make some plays, and, you know, we put his legs in it, and, and uh, some read stuff. They were running us down from behind. Uh, and, uh, I thought Keith Ford came in and gave us a, a different look with some power runs, some great efforts. But uh, any win like this, the team win, and, and uh, Give him, you know, give him some opportunities where, you know, we don't have to put it in his hands to win all the time. And, and, and that's our offensive line, our running backs, have some receivers make some plays for him, too. Coach, we lost a legend in college football today. I know Joe Tiller meant a lot to you. Describe to me just what he meant to you. Well, I started off the day with that. You know, here's a man who was a great coach, but even better man. I, besides my dad, you know, I've known him since I was 18 years old. Played four years for him as a defense coordinator. He gave me, I was a GA for him at Washington State, gave me my first full-time job at Wyoming for two years, got back to Purdue, really had a huge influence. I, I wouldn't be where I was today without Joe Tiller and, and uh, uh, my condolences to Arnett and the family. Uh, he's in a better place now, but he's had an impact on a lot of different people's lives and, and, uh, and me in particular, and, and uh, so today was kind of tough. Thank you, Coach. All right, thank you. Tom, back to you. All right, Cole, thanks. You, you know, so often in college football, we think about just the game on the field, or we think about a coach's contract, and we talk about his buyout, or what the AD has said about how many wins he needs to keep his job. But Kevin Sumlin, a lot of that took a back seat today because Joe Tiller passed away, a guy who showed him the ropes of offense, showed him how to raise and teach and tutor quarterbacks, and he's going to come in and coach an emotional game in front of almost 100,000. With, the back, with that in the back of mind, and, and you can kind of see a little bit about who Kevin Sumlin is with that answer. Yeah, that's why football translates to life so well. You got so much adversity, things that don't have to do with X's and O's. You got to come out, and you got to try to put that aside or try to use that as some kind of motivation. Unbelievable by Kevin Sumlin and this entire team, really, after the injury on the field. It was very serious. Everyone rebounded, and then Kevin Sumlin, obviously, with a heavy heart, Coached his butt off today. Yeah, an incredible win for Texas A&M, especially when you consider what they have coming up next. We got more coming from College Station in just a moment. But we want to get back to the studio real quick to check with Dari and the gang before we have more from right here at Kyle Field. Dari, Keith, Coach, someone told me that you bring a little different dimension to this offense. You did that in the second half. What different dimension do you bring? Oh, uh, you know, I was, everybody was hungry. You know. We wasn't happy about the first half, but, you know, we came out with Avengers, and, you know, we was ready to go. Uh, you know, offensive line was ready to, you know, be physical, and uh, that was one thing that was different about, you know, the first half and the second half. Have you been able to tell a difference since the offensive line has begun to rotate bodies in, that they're more fresh late in games? Uh, yes, sir. You know, we, we play everybody, man. Like, you, you know, just like in the running back court and the receiving and the quarterback, we play everybody. So, we, you know, the longevity of everybody, you know, keep everybody first. So, you know, it's working out, you know, really well. This offense continues to grow. What did you learn about yourself tonight as you head into the Alabama? Um, I got the will, man. Like, I, I fight. Everybody fights. Um, and the toughest times through adversity, it doesn't phase us. We keep fighting. Thank you, Keith. Thank you. Tom, back to you. All right, Cole, thanks. Yeah, Texas A&M's offense uh, kind of came alive in the fourth quarter, and, and that was key for them. But it wouldn't have been possible without the pressure that they got on Jake Bentley. Four sacks in the fourth quarter. John Chavis is a guy that likes to dial up pressure when he's got guys who can do it. He's got some lunch pail guys. They, they may not be the most talented, but they work and they strive, and, and they're able to get to the quarterback. And then you have the pressure of being a quarterback in this league and in this environment, trailing and with no timeouts, and you've already been put on your back twice. 
That's a tough hill for Jake Bentley. Yeah, absolutely. John Chavis even said, you know, when you don't have a Miles Garrett or a Deshaun Hall, you got to change your scheme. They've been providing more pressure. He made a challenge to his defensive front. We need to provide pressure with just four. And you saw that at the end of the game, and then they were able to dial up pressure when they needed to to really disrupt Jake Bentley. That's tough as a young quarterback. You got this crowd who was in it tonight. You've been hitting the mouth a couple times, and you don't have your number one target out there on the outside. Well, Cole standing by with one of those great Aggie defenders who got pressure on Jake Bentley. Cole? Texas A&M linebacker Otaro Alaka with us. Uh, you just tell me, you thought you rushed the passer maybe 20 times tonight? Did you yeah. know you were going to be asked to do that coming in? Uh, not exactly, but that's really just how the game went, you know. Uh, we noticed that the pressure was getting to him, so we dialed it up. Talk about this defense and what you learned about yourselves. What do you still need to improve on as you begin to prepare for Alabama next week? Yeah, well, we, got, we still got a whole lot to Im improve on. You know, we're not perfect, but... Uh, just learned that we can play to our our like, as good as we, we we can play so we just got to keep coming and keep improving every week you said you saw that the pressure was starting to get to him and you picked up on that other than just recording a sack what are some other ways that you and your defensive teammates know and can maybe go tell John Chavis pressures getting to these guys I mean well pressure affects the passes so you know if you, if you had the pressure in the quarterback's face he's also gonna start throwing those wild passes those ill-advised passes so that also helps out the DBs as well. Otaro, thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Tom, back to you. All right, Cole, thanks. Uh, 56 offensive plays for South Carolina tonight, Jordan. 12 of them lost yardage, seven sacks, five additional <laughs> tackles for loss. It seems like once you get going backwards, it's really hard to find that momentum again. The football's a game of momentum, and it's a game of inches. Anytime you're heading the rod to the wrong direction, it's tough to right the ship, especially on the road. So A&M now gets Alabama. They're going to have them here at home. And, and since Johnny was here, it's really the last time they're able to take advantage of Nick Saban's squad. I, you know, momentum's a funny thing. Uh, they obviously have it. They have an incredible crowd. They'll be even bigger next week. But how does a and match up with Alabama overall? Well, <laughs> nobody matches up person to person with Alabama. But what I like about tonight is Kellen Mond in the box, if you look at how the box score, didn't have a bad game passing. But it definitely wasn't effective or explosive mm -hmm. by any means. But he made things happen with his legs. And if there's one recipe for a quarterback to beat Alabama, it's making plays outside the pocket with your legs. And Kellen Mond got a ton of confidence from last week, winning that game late. And I think rebounded well tonight and used his legs in the second half. Here's another thing to keep in mind. Kellen Mond and his family are good friends with Deshaun Watson and his family. Kellen Mond's dad has said, listen, Kellen's bigger than Deshaun Watson. He's a little bit faster than Deshaun Watson. I mean, that's a heck of a comparison to make. It that's is. a dad talking. But as you're talking about recipes for success, that's a guy who knows how to beat Alabama, and that's the recipe you're looking for. And a team that's playing uh, with really no hesitation and nothing to lose. Mm -hmm. Well, it was a fun one tonight and another incredible atmosphere on our SEC Saturday night. The 12th man was sensational, as they always are. And you heard Kevin Sumlin mention that to Cole Kublik. South Carolina made it really interesting. They scored 17 unanswered, but then A&M came from behind and had a tremendous fourth quarter to pull it out in the end. Aggies now 4-1, 2-0 in the SEC. Back to the studio with Dari in the game.